I was at the grocery store a couple days ago and I saw a dude just drinking a go-gurt. It wasn't a go-gurt that they sold there either. Oh, we so they brought his own pocket gurt, go-gurt, yeah. <laughs> his pocket gurt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you will see that a lot more because yeah, they um, legally they employees cannot touch you in the stores, and people know that now. So yeah, take what you want, eat what you want. It's whatever now. So speaking of a world without laws, Joe Buckley, oh Mad Max style. Let me tell you about Roar, the most dangerous movie ever made. Oh my god, it, it sounds scary already. I don't know if I can handle this. What do you know about Roar, Joe Buckley? Uh, so I, I have seen the film, uh, and, and I guess I, I, I can describe it as a film. It's a very loose film. Uh, I didn't really get too much out of it in terms of, like, plot or characters or anything like that. It's really, it's just a lot of footage of really big cats. <laughs> yep. So Roar is uh, the story of a Hollywood family who wanted to capture the wild beauty and majesty of big cats. To do this, they got over 100 lions, tigers, pumas, jaguars, pumas. Um, They got pumas and cougars. They got a lot of big fucking kitties, but none of them were trained. There wasn't a single cat that was professionally trained on that film set. Oh, oh, that that sounds like really good. Oh, okay. So I guess they just kind of like filmed them like way off in the distance with like really like high focus lenses and like... uh... I don't, maybe, like, baiting them out, like, a bit closer to them with, like, some meat or something like that and letting them be free. The way that they did it, Joe, ended with over 70 cast and crew injuries. Oh, oh, well, you know. Uh, yeah, it's the 80s. Uh, you, you can pretty much, you can do what you want. Ah, so what? A couple PAs get scalped. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. So I think you'll agree with me this, Joe. It's hard to classify what kind of genre Roar is. It's weird, right? Like the whole yeah. fucking movie is off. Yeah, yeah. Because it was designed as like a, a very fun, just family film. Go take your nine-year-olds, go look at the big cats. But the issue is what most of the time, whenever the humans are interacting with them on camera, they have a look of wild terror in their eyes and they're shaking. <laughs> Yeah, it's I think the the I looked at some of the marketing material and they called it a family friendly adventure comedy, which is always good when you have four words to describe the genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like Raiders of the Lost Ark. If like Indiana had to get licked by a bunch of pumas or whatever. Yeah, (laughs) pumas. this movie felt like I was watching a snuff film. Yes, knowing that so many people actually did get hurt. And I'm, yeah. you'll you'll hear me go into this later. But there are several injuries that happen on camera. And they went, well, that footage is good enough. I guess we're going to use it. Yeah, some people have described this as kind of like a cross between like a, uh, like a Disney Channel live action film and like Faces of Death. Was that the one with the monkey? Yeah, but that footage was fake. That monkey wasn't really killed like that. It's a rubber okay. hammer. Most of the footage in Faces of Death is fake, and about 80% of it's fake. 20% of the footage is just incidental death footage that they already had captured. Oh, uh, this is a complete side tangent. I watched Apocalypto on uh, New Year's oh, Eve, right? Yeah. And I, it's been a minute. It's, uh, when was the last time you watched Apocalypto? I've never seen it, yeah. Oh, it's, it's actually... It, it's a little looking at it now. It's a, and I swear, I swear, people that are like wondering what the fuck I'm talking about. There's a way that this ties in. I swear. Oh, the movie like feels a lot more like kind of schlocky because like things are there's like Hollywood movie bits yeah. that just keep happening in like this Mesoamerican society. But it's a good movie. Like the pacing and tension is really, really good. Anyway, there's a part in it where they uh, where they kill a uh, jaguar. And it cuts in the middle of the scene. Like, it has the guy running from the Jaguar. That's a real one. And then it cuts to them attacking it in quick little shots. And it's like an obvious puppet, like a mm, hand puppet yeah. that's just going left and right, going, eh, 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 eh. yeah, they, they're stabbing a Squishmallow to death. It did look like a shitty Squishmallow. It looked like the McDonald's Squishmallows that they have right now, where they're like kind of shitty and they're not full oh. of the squishy material. Yeah, they're just a new type of mini beanies or whatever. The, the teeny beanies, I think they were called, yep. 
Yep. And this is how you know. <laughs> I can reinforce that point, Joe, because I was on Facebook Marketplace just kind of taking a look around, and I saw two listings for people selling all their squishmallows because they were getting a divorce. <laughs> ah, yeah, that'll do it. Every time I look at this big, giant, squirtle squishmallow, it reminds me of what I've lost. I can't have this <laughs> anymore. $5. Yeah. My life savings, yep. I had to split my life savings with my wife. It was $380. She got $160. <laughs> they, do, they do have giant ones that cost that much. It was like a giant Starlex. Oh, ooh, that would be nice. Yeah. So this is the actual plot of the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, so, hang on a second. I'm going to crack open my sip. There you go. Right that- there. What, what what type of sip are you, are you glugging, Joe? This is a watermelon, uh, Monster Watermelon Reserve. I don't know if they sell these anymore. Oh, I actually like the reserves. It's the only flavor of that disgusting green that I like. Oh, yeah. No, these I found at the Dollar General, so I guess they were selling so poorly that they just sent them off to be sold for $1.25 a pop instead of the normal three seventy five that Monsters cost now. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the movie, Big Cat Researcher Mark is the only white man in Africa, and he's living in his big treehouse research base, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. His family is coming to visit from Chicago, but there's been a mix-up at the cookie factory. Mm. He shows up at 7 p.m., but they arrived at 7 a.m. So now uh. it's a race for Mark to return home and save his family from the lions that the movie says are harmless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the giant cats that he's invited to live with his family and young children. So I saw this movie years ago. It was the same place that I saw Clockwork Orange when I was eight years old, right? Oh, wow, hell yeah, double feature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you see a big cat, you see a rape. <laughs> I really watched a lot of shit. I, I watched Apocalypto when I was maybe two or three years older than I saw a Clockwork Orange. I wasn't in high school yet. That movie is the fucking first. I'm sorry. I just need to talk about Apocalypto more. The first third of that movie is like an incredibly brutal for the time. Yeah, incredibly yeah. brutal, like Aztec attack on a village. Like it's fucked. Oh, oh, yeah, they're kind of like their own, like, mini Blood Meridian. Yeah. I, I, I guess you're still planning on going ahead with that movie, even with uh, Cormac being dead. Hmm. That's the one where it's, like, just, like, a bunch of fucked up shit happening to, like, kind of <laughs> yeah, make fun yeah. of the Wild West being, like, an idealized thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a book where it's essentially the entire thing is just genocide of, like, natives, like, described, like, in vicious detail. And then walking. If they're, if they're not genociding, they're walking places. So it, it's going to be a real struggle to film this. It'll be almost as inappropriate as Roar. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe even worse. Primary source for this episode, The Cats of Shambhala, which I bought off of uh, Amazon, and it had two Joyce. May the Cats of Shambhala stay with you. Signed, Tippy oh, Hedren. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yep, it's, so that is unfortunately a little bit of a spoiler. Tippy Hedren does not fucking die in this movie. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did uh, did anyone die for real? Um, or just I will tell you. Okay, okay, yep. Keep it a mystery. So yeah, so she Tippy Hedren was like a famous kind of like for fifties uh, and sixties. Yeah. That what, that was her era. Uh, she was real big then, yeah. Tell me about her work with Alfred Hitchcock and the Birds, because I knew a couple of things that happened during that movie, but I don't know the full extent of it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, um, Hitchcock was, like, getting real handsy with her. She didn't like that. She told him to stop. And at different points in the film, he was, like, he was throwing birds at her. Uh, They were tying (laughs) birds to her. Uh, the scene, like, in the, um, the, the, uh, telephone box, uh, so that was meant to be, like, all mechanical, mechanical birds at first, but then they switched them out with real ones, and then she got, like, injured on the plate glass, like, window bar of it, ended up cutting her face up a bit. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the birds was, like, a, a painful shoot. I've actually, now that I think about it, I actually saw the birds in the same place I saw Roar and Clockwork oh, Orange. Oh, okay. Uh, IFC, maybe. 
I, actually, probably. That probably was where they came up. Oh, yeah. What does IFC do now? Are they like oh. TLC, where TLC just shows you, like, golem creatures Yeah, fucking? yeah, yeah. It's it's the saddest fucking thing in the world. Uh, I was looking at it on, like, <laughs> yeah, the TV guide or whatever, and I saw on IFC it was, like, a six-and-a-half-hour-long two-and-a-half-men marathon on the independent, they... on the independent <laughs> film channel. Two and a half. All right, just fine. We just have a TV show with one rapist. Yeah, yeah. One child sex rapist. Uh, That's fine. Yeah, no, he got Corey Haim. It's out there now. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so there's a uh, a really good quote in Tippy's book. She says, "Quote: Working with live lions would be better than live ravens." Like uh, she got yeah. fucked from that movie. She barely made it out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, um, Hitchcock had, like, locked her into, like, a seven-year contract as well. So, yeah, like, um, she wasn't able to work for a while, too. Oh, okay, so that but explains that, this next part here. Yeah. So, she apparently met her husband, Noel Marshall, when she was filming with Hitchcock. So, I was wondering, I was like, when I, when I read in the book that she said she had such a horrible fucking time with that dude, I was like, why is she still there? But if she was forced by contract to be around that fat fuck... Yeah, and I guess that makes sense. And that was like much, much more common back in the fifties and sixties, where actors would be like locked into a studio contract for like years and years at a time. Now that doesn't really happen in any capacity. Good. Yeah, <laughs> that is good actually. That probably was a fucking horrible, uh, horrible deal for actors. Yeah, yeah. Because if you if you blow up on like year two of your contract, you're, you're fucked. You just you get whatever you sign up for, like in the beginning. Yep. But you could, like, you could literally, like, you could become a star within, like, the first, like, year or two of your contract, and you'd still be locked in for another five years or so. God damn. Yep. So, she met Noel there, right? Um, they were filming some some schlocky kind of crap in uh, Mozambique, which I believe is on the west, like, coast of Africa. And they saw this game warden's house, and it was just full of fucking lions. They are like, whoa, that's kind of cool. We should make a movie about that. Yeah, put it on the big screen. Yeah, Once they probably, were done, uh, I was gonna say it would probably be better if they just would have like taken a camera over to that house and just filmed it for a bit, and they probably would have yeah. got more footage than they ended up getting from the actual movie. Yeah, because their idea was like, hey, let's make a movie to showcase how neat cats are, and we could raise money to like donate for cat protections, right? Uh, yeah, yep. That was their entire. That was their entire pitch. Oh, wait, no, it's not their entire pitch. Noel drafted up a whole script called Lions, 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 and More Lions. Oh, oh and that my was his God. pitch. No, you know what? That sounds like too many lions. I will not be going to see that at the theater. I can handle two lions, but four is too, too many. Yeah, they have their pitch, and they reach out to the big cat community in California mm. to see how feasible it is, right? Yeah, just the furries strutting <laughs> along, yep. Yeah. In the fur suit, not airing it out. Yep. So they were like, "Hey, can we have your lions for this movie?" Please. And then they're told by the experts that it's a bad idea, even if they were trained, because cats are quote unpredictable and quote don't mix well and quote will kill your whole family. Oh so yeah, they yeah, were. But... They no, no. They're like, we're not giving you our fucking cats. No, I know that from experience. Yeah, I had seven cats living in the home myself, almost like a raw experience. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah and how just... many do you have now? Right now, we uh, just got Jess's four. We split them up. They were fighting too much. Yep, could not mix well. Yeah, the big chopper was going after my poor Eddie, and he would not leave him alone. Oh, poor Eddie Spaghetti. Yeah, he was getting cornered under the stairs, and you were just hearing yowling, like, get away, get away. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna try to, like, corral the four cats inside this room and kind of, like, live out my own roar experience on the pod. Uh, but the one was being too noisy. I had to let him out. <laughs> it was a little too rowdy. Yeah, he doesn't like it when I close the door on him. So... Right. They're they're not giving up on getting their cats because they're rich white people. Oh, right? yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they go through the rich, like fat cat, big cat connections, and they get in contact with a dude named Ron Oxley, who's an animal trainer out of Soledad Canyon, which is like an animal preserve just kind of in the middle of California. Oh, man. He's got... like, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just, like they got those big cats just living in like the Gulf or something. <laughs> 
They they have like a small reserve. Like it's like a few things. Uh, I found out later it was never like given like insurance. Oh, uh, what? Uh, who needs it? So I don't know if that ha- I don't know if it had insurance right now or if they fuck it up later because they fuck some <laughs> they fuck a lot of things up. That's a little bit of a spoiler for you. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah the, the lions have been digging underground and tearing up the telephone wires. <laughs> They've caused eighty thousand dollars worth of damage to the interstate <laughs> lines. Yep, they had to be put down. Ron tells him he's like, "Listen, you could maybe." So this one guy is like, "Listen, you could maybe get a bunch of lions to work well on film, but only if you basically make a career out of raising them at home, right? Like you're gonna have to be around them damn near twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, and you'll have to castrate them. There's no way they can have their balls." Nope, they they all have their balls. They yeah. all have their claws. They all have their teeth. They have everything. That was the number one mistake on set. <laughs> so they're all in on the idea. They're like, yeah, that sounds awesome. So Ron introduces them to the first cat named Neil, a nine foot long, 400 pound, big old furry baby. Oh, yeah, he's a little sweet one. So Neil is going to be the first of many lions that they grow, that they raise in their suburban home. And I cannot stress how suburban it is. Like on your phone, look up Knob Hill, California. That is in the fucking middle of the city. And this was like the 80s. So that was still there. That city was still there. That was still a highly developed suburban area, dude. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. Yeah. Oh man, I'm like, yeah, I'm like looking it up now. There's like a big ass like uh big ass like clock tower looking thing. There's like a bunch of sky rises. Uh there, I see yeah, a like bodega. This is... Oh. <laughs> oh, there's they like got a little bodega uh, cats. They're really big. They weigh 400 pounds. Yeah, yeah. They got like a little tram going through like the city and they yeah, you can just hop on the tram if you want. So they work out a plan to have Neil stay at their home for they can't do 24/7. But they'll do five days a week. But there's a little bit of a problem, right? Uh, For some reason, uh, lions aren't legal to have as pets, but cheetahs are. Oh, so you gotta paint dots on the back of them. (laughs) I wish. That would have been much funnier. Instead, Ron shows up, like the Ron Oxley, the animal trainer guy, he shows up outside their house in a windowless green FBI van in the dead of night. This is the 80s, so he has one of those, like, cartoonishly large, like, car phones, right? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. And there's just a satellite dish on top of the van to look, like, nice <laughs> and, yeah, just uh, conspicuous. And it says Pussycat Posies Flower Delivery Service. Yeah, yeah. We're roaring to meet you. Yeah. So that's how they do it. They just sneak him in there in the middle of the night every day, right? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Nobody will know this, just like a bunch of growling and screeching coming out of the people's home. Yep, so big cats, believe it or not, are not super good at living in the home, right? What? (laughs) What do you mean? What, they like ripped up the couch and stuff? So when they want to play, they use their paws to punch your ankles out from under you. And if you're ever lower than a big cat, especially if you fall and get lower than them, that activates their prey drive and yeah, they will attack yeah. you. Mm, you looking pretty tasty on the floor there. I know you used to be my owner three seconds ago, but damn. <laughs> Put a little barbecue sauce on you, that'd be fine eating. Another cool thing, big cats, and I think small cats do this too, uh, will just arbitrarily become possessive of people or things. Yeah. And if they decide they want it, they'll just randomly decide to just piss on it and guard that thing until they get bored. <laughs> you have like a bunch of cat urine all over your jeans. Everything you own is just soaked in cat urine because it likes you that day. <laughs> there was a um, there was a like a stained glass like tiger, <laughs> like like the zoo books tiger poster that ah. Tippy had. She got like her. Her aunt or something gave it to her. It was like a really nice. It was super yeah, etched. Yeah. Every single cat in the house would piss on it constantly. Mm-hmm. That's mine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. These cats have destroyed my collection of fine china. I can't believe it. My <laughs> Fabergé egg. Her neighbors, right? And definitely they start knocking on the door asking what the fuck's happening, right? Yeah, why, do, why does it sound like someone's dying next door every day? 
Because here is the real killer. So whenever the lions would go into the backyard to shit, they would roar. They would just ah. roar like seven or eight times a minute. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, he has to let you know, like, hey, I'm out here. Don't come back here. I'm doing my business. So they say in the book, like, the neighbors would come up, right? They're all old people. So she would say, she's like, oh, I didn't hear anything. It must have been the wind. Or it must have been yeah. those, quote, bored teens and uh-huh, their motorcycles. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they came over here. They were making cat sounds. Twelve of them all together. Yep, it's a new gang. Yep. I, and <laughs> if they didn't believe that, she'd say, oh, I think they were urban. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. There's some urban cats out here. I, they ain't mine. They ain't living in my home. Go away. They came in on the bus. <laughs> the bus. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, Neil's awesome. We love him. He's going to be the hero lion for what the for the movie that was now called Roar, which is a much better title. Yeah, I think that's probably better over like lions, 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 lions and more lions. <laughs> Every time it just adds other lions to it. Yeah, well, there's 30 lions in the film. You got to put 30 lions in your title. Oh, there's much more than that. There's 131 lines in that movie. Oh, okay. It's, is that like um just counting like all the ones they had to put down for injuring humans? Or no, not counting those ones. Uh, I'll tell you right now, they never put down a single lion. Oh, and there's going to be a nice couple of lions going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. He should probably get kicked off set for his antics. <laughs> They're the Marlon Brandows. Anyway, so funding, right? So they got their they got their big cat and they got their their I'm sure is fucking horrible script that's like three pages long. So how do they get their money, right? So the best way is to generate funds by hosting Batman villain dinner parties mm-hmm. for all their rich pedophile friends in Hollywood where they had the lion going around, right? Like they were fucking hosting the penguin oh, ball. Oh, 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 oh. I thought it, I thought for some like DC was really big that year and like they just had like a party where everybody dresses up as like the Riddler and Two Face oh. and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I'll give ten thousand dollars to be the Iceman. So this, the Batman villain parties did actually work, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Word spread. Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I cut out was that one of these parties, Time Magazine showed up and they were going to like get like a, an interview, right? With the, with Noel about what was happening. And they had the lion on the top of the stairs and uh, it took longer than 10 seconds to get the shot, right? Oh yeah. Yep. So the lion just got bored. Yeah. It just like jumped down to the bottom of the stairs and scared the shit out of everyone. Yep. <laughs> Time magazines running for the hills. They they're called yep. a brave organization willing to get down into the truth of anything. But it seems like big cats frighten them away. <laughs> so word spreading, right? Like the Time Magazine, and then all their rich friends are doing all their, their you know, oh my god, check out these these wonderful kitties. Yeah, right? oh yeah. If I was like a millionaire, I'd probably like hang out with like a lion for like $10,000 and eat some steak and stuff. Yep. So what happened was zoos started reaching out, asking if they would take the animals they could no longer afford, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Can you take all of our badly behaved tigers? We don't want them in the <laughs> exactly. zoo anymore. <laughs> Right? The ones that we can't... Because the zoo's not going to take their best line and give it to you. They're going to keep, like, the three that they can manage. Oh, yeah, those are the show animals for them. But, yeah, they'll give you, like, the gangly tigers who, like, spit on the ground. (laughs) The ones who mutter... uh, They mutter something under their breath, and it sounds like a slur, but you're not really sure because you don't know them that well. Yeah, yeah. You weren't able to boost up the audio gang and cancel him. Uh, They get a lion cub named Casey who was only a few weeks old. That's like the youngest lion they have. Casey, they treat, they they basically raise Casey from birth, right? Like Tippy's like bottle feeding him. Yeah, yeah. He's just like a human child now. We promise. Pick him up. (laughs) So uh, another thing they get is they get three tiger cubs named Cherries, Berries, and Peaches. And they got those from a native Canadian Indian tribe. And I'm not sure... (laughs) Joe, are tigers native to Canada? Uh, I I've never heard any rumblings of that. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I don't know what the yeah. fuck. I like to, maybe they tried to make their own roar movie, and I, the whole tribe got fucking wiped out. I believe that like lions like to live in hot areas, and Canada is not really conducive to that. So <laughs> it's possible. I have no idea. 
they now have two lions and three tigers. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. they have more. I'm sorry. They have six lions and tigers living in their house at this moment. Oh, okay. Yep. And they're just like, they're going, like, they're just toppling over the fridge trying to get to their cat food. <laughs> Yanking the door off the hinge. So they had a normal cat and dog, right? Oh, oh I'm sure they were happy about that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they would go and lock them into, like, the forsaken tower on the opposite side of the house. And without fail, every single one of these fucking cats that enter their home would make a beeline for that yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, they know what's in there. Mmm, fresh meat, yeah. Yep, so it was really great to have all these cats in, right? So what they would do is they would have to quarantine sections of the house off, like room by room, for the maid staff to clean all the piss and replace the destroyed (laughs) furniture. Yeah, yeah. The cats would then hear the vacuums and destroy the room just to the side of it that they were in, and it never ended. That house must have smelled fucking horrible. Because I I hear that they have, like, rancid meat shitties. All they eat is fucking dead zebra. Yeah. Well, it's not like, uh, it's not the good part of, like, the dead zebra either. It's, like, dead zebra intestines and ass. Yep. And eyelids. Ass. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> eyelids, <laughs> the best part of the zebra. Most people don't know that. Yeah. So, here's a story for you, right? One evening, it's about 8 p.m., and Tippy is driving home from the happiest butcher on Earth after buying <laughs> 800 mm. pounds of raw meat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we promise. This is nothing but great ain't me. This is the good stuff right here. <laughs> this this is 30% zebra eyelid. Yeah, this didn't fall on the floor. <laughs> Which they, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that probably was all gutter meat, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's going to fucking lions. Who gives a shit? Yeah, they don't mind. Yeah, they'll, they'll eat the gristle. <laughs> He's got his thumb on the weight pad. She gets real mad about it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see what I see what you're doing there. <laughs> anyway, so right, she gets home and she's taking all the meat. You know, she's filling up the meat freezer in the garage. Mm. But she's immediately like, "Something's wrong here. What's what's going on?" Casey, the cat that she's had from a few weeks, it's like a few months old now. So they're getting a little more independent and they're missing, right? Oh, all yeah. All the other cats are there, but Casey's not. So she gets back out in her truck and starts canvassing the area. Mm, yeah. Because she's afraid that if someone finds Casey, they might, quote, misunderstand his play patterns. Oh, and then pump him full of bullets. <laughs> it's because it's at twilight. So he's obviously on the hunt, right? Like, if he uh-huh. sees anything, he's just going to kill it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she finds him a few blocks away, just like in the middle of the street, doing like that catwalk. Oh. You know, when like they're like stalking up on yeah, something to kill yeah. it. <laughs> so what she tries to do is she tries to she they have like these big fucking pit bull leashes and she tries to put it on there, but he's not having it. Yeah. Kobe, no down. <laughs> bad Kobe, bad. He starts yeah, he starts acting like King Cobra. No, god damn it. That was the last drink combination that I had! (laughs) So, alternatively, she could just pick the lion up, right? But the problem with that is that you lose your face. So she comes up with a plan, right? Big satchel. (laughs) Her plan is to go, ah, yell out in pain and start limping back to home. Casey turns around and starts following her. Mm-hmm. And in the book, mm-hmm. she says it's because Casey felt bad that his pit mommy was hurt. In reality, <laughs> it's because she's easy fucking prey, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's like she's at the watering hole now and she's got a limp. It's time to go at her. Yep. <laughs> so she does. She just does it. She like does the Homer Simpson uh, limp all the way home, locks him in the garage and just immediately forgets what he was doing because cats are stupid fucking animals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So well, that yeah, he, pr- yeah, he probably started, like, uh, maybe, like, chasing after, like, a moth in the home and, like, hitting the fans. And, uh, just <laughs> Busting, getting, putting yeah. a hole in the wall. Giant scratch marks down every single wall in your home you have. <laughs> Piss everywhere. Yeah, it just it looks like the set of the exorcist. Yeah. The exorcist comes up in this, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. What, what, did they try to, like, remake it with, like, a really shitty studio and spend, like, $400 million to get the rights, and then the movie just completely bombed and made less than 100 mil? 
something even more disastrous. Oh, oh, okay, weird. Yeah. Huh. So after the after the the Casey escapade, the 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 police arrive at their door, right? And they say that multiple neighbors had called them saying they had seen a lion in the road and heard someone screaming. Ah, it's a prank. It, in the book it says that Noel quote talked them out of trouble by explaining that their neighbor was obviously some kind of crazy. Yeah. But I'm yeah. pretty sure he just bribes the police. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A couple thousand will make that go away. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're able to bribe them off for at least a couple more weeks. Then they're like, listen, bud, you got to get rid of these fucking lions. Yeah, if this happens one more time, it's going on the news. We can't keep doing this. <laughs> so they start sending uh, most, not all, they still keep some of their cats to Soledad Canyon. And they kind of set up like a pipeline, right? He'll do his FBI van shit. They'll stay in the home for a week or two. Because remember, they want to acclimate all these cats to people so that they can use them for their stupid movie. Yeah, yeah. You got to film these lions. So they get the lions in the home and then they send them to the canyon. Well, one of the cats uh, was in the home. It was a little tiger. And it was gifted to the Time Warner president's wife in an attempt to schmooze him into funding the movie. I'm sure she loved that. Yeah. (laughs) They say in the book that the the fucking thing just destroyed their house and they got it back after a couple weeks. Yeah. You take it. I'm done with this. (laughs) But it says he wasn't impressed with Roar. But I don't know how the dude fucking fast talked his way into this. But he is like, hey, listen, Noel. In exchange for this lion that's destroying my home, do you want to be an executive producer for The Exorcist? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the only movie in the 80s that made like $665 million oh, unadjusted for inflation. Oh, it did gangbusters, yep. Yeah. Fucking insane amounts of money. I, you know? I, yeah, I don't, I don't think the budget's too high on The Exorcist either. Let me look it up real quick, but it's probably under it's, 10 it's mil. It's minimal, yeah. So they've got about 40 animals at the canyon that they're boarding right now, right? And so they do the math, and it's just cheaper to just buy the place out, right? Which works out perfect, because now they have even more cat space, and they've got a great place to film. So they got the script, they got the location, now they just need to get the cast and crew. So no union would agree to send their guys out for the movie. Right. No, they, no, they, no. They sent their union reps to look over the work site. And they had a few issues. Yeah. Number one, union guidelines is they want three animal trainers for each creature on a film set. Ah, and fooey. too expensive. The canyon had actually flooded five years ago. So he's like, all right, cool, cool. He starts construction on all of the cast and crew buildings and he puts it about five feet above the flood line. But he was like, I, I'm not paying 200 animal trainers. You're fucking insane. And a fair wage for all the crew? No, that's not going to happen. Uh-uh, no. Minimum wage. That sounds a lot better, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You like working for minimum wage, right? The state says that's what you should get. So I mean, who am I to go against the state? So they gave up on union approval, right? Yeah. The two of them agreed that Roar couldn't be made with, quote, pampered industry and union workers and oh quote. yeah yep yeah because yeah like the the film unions are some of the last ones left with any real strength in america like if you um if you keep filming through like a meal that's like a major deal and they have to get paid double time for that so yeah like the big lions do not factor into any kind of union paperwork like i'm a i'm a pa i have to move sandbags i don't have to touch lions <laughs> very clear on the exactly, contract right but Joe, you can't join the union until you've had at least one film under your belt, right? Yeah. So what they do, and I thought this was really smart, is they put ads in newspapers up and down California for a fantastic first project, right? They yeah. went out of their way to find like people who are brand new to the industry and for people who had been let go from any other film crew. Oh, well, the drunkards. So people in the yeah. back lots, yeah, that are just kicking shit. Yeah, yeah, you got the you got the guy who's destroyed three high panel lights on like a film set because he couldn't stop drinking Tito's. Yeah, I told you about that guy, that temp worker who uh, got fired because he was just kicking all like like uh, we're in the Midwest, right? So there's a lot of planes, a lot of flat areas. So there's a lot of warehouses. And yeah, a dude yeah. was at a warehouse and he was just kicking like the three hundred dollar sensor bars that would turn on lights. 
Just because he was bored. He was just fucking yeah. full force kicking him. That man is working on this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure he'll take care, good care of the lions and pumas. Yep. So, the crew. And this is directly from her book. Like, she, she treated this like an Ocean's Eleven. Oh, oh, so, uh, the first man. Oh, I was going to say, you want to, uh, it's like an incidental point, but you want to know why CGI is taken off like so hard uh, within the last 20 years? Because uh, you don't have to, you can have 500 people on a CGI shot and you don't have to pay a single one of them. You got to pay one guy. Well, that's a, that's essentially it. It's because the practical effect people have unions and the CGI people don't. Oh, I didn't know they had, I, I kind of assumed that they brute forced one by now. No, for the most part, yeah, still, um, yeah, CGI workers are still not unionized at this point. Interesting. Yeah. I guess because, too, if they tried to unionize, they'll just be like, fuck it, we'll get it from, we'll source it from, like, Taiwan and India and shit. Yeah. No, no, we gotta, like, for the most part now, I think in the new Marvel films, the costumes are not real. Those are all CGI at this point. That's fucked. Yeah. And again, right, for the so, most uh, for the most part, you're they're also not looking at the other actors either. They're they're all shot separately. That's why it feels so fucking weird. And I watched one of the newest Kate movies. They were just yeah. kind of like looking in a direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too hard to get like three big names in the same room. It's expensive. Yeah. All right. So the crew. I'm gonna move on to the crew. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the first stocky Frank Tom, the Chinese Mexican. He owns his own cougar, knows oh. Juno, and has pigtails. Yeah, yeah, bring him on. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We'll film the big yeah. cat. You get to slap him around a little bit, do some judo top chops on him. It'll be fine. That's how, we, <laughs> that's how we'll corral these big animals, judo chops. Uh, mini-skirted Sylvia, the ex-circus performer. Oh, She yeah. baby talks to animals, and on her first day at the circus, she got dragged by this, <laughs> dragged by an elephant across the stage, and Tippy calls her, quote, the most courageous, because she didn't quit that day. I guess that would be courageous, yeah, it could also, like, mentally ill could be another word to describe <laughs> it. She almost, I'll give you a little bit of spoiler, too, she almost got fucking gutted, like, oh, twice. how nice. <laughs> uh, tall, kindly, Liberato Torres from Guadalajara, he had two very important jobs, procuring the food for the cats. Oh, that's a big and one. feeding the cats. Oh, see that, I would not want, I, I can get the food fine, but I'm not feeding these animals. So feeding them, this is a pretty funny story. It takes three hours and a hundred big fucking Menards buckets of meat, right? Mm, mm, yeah. Grill One it. of his crew was fired when he broke his leg in a car accident. The reason why was because the cats saw him limping while carrying the food once. Mm -hmm. And then every single time they saw him afterwards, they'd start throwing themselves at the fences like zombies. He is the food. Yeah. I th I assumed he was going to get fired for maybe just, like, stealing pork loins out of the meat buckets to take home to his family. And oh, they no, couldn't dude, have I'm going to tell you yeah. right now, Joe, these are, like, the most courageous people on the planet. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, there's some have fucking to be. shit that they do that you will not believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some would say courageous, others would say desperate. Yeah, yeah, just in poverty, uh, dealing with animals is better than, I guess, dying of an empty stomach. Yep. So for the lead, right, Joe, they wanted a tough actor. So they reached out to all the big action guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. They tried Stallone. to reach out to Schwarzenegger and all these other people. Right. Yeah. And they said uh, they said no. Oh, damn. <laughs> they were they weren't interested. So then they and I thought this was a smart idea that they did here. They started reaching out to those actors, stunt men. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That, reasoning, that is a good idea. Yeah. Because. Uh... They yeah, yeah they're, that's like, hey, here's a stepping stone for you to go from stuntman to a face. Yep. Problem with that is you need to still have a fucking face after the filming's done. Yeah. 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 Uh, one person did respond. It was Sean Connery. Uh, he, he considered the role because Tippy was like asking, please, could you do me a favor? And he told her, he's like, I'm not doing this. Only a fool would take this part. Yeah. So Noel decided he was going to be the lead. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. And then the rest of the family agreed to play the rest of the family, like, sit boys style. Yeah. Right? Where they yeah. just, <laughs> John is John yeah, and Jerry whoever. is Jerry. Yeah. That way you can yell, like, at the, the actor's name and they don't get confused if you say, like, hey, Billy. And that guy's name ain't Billy. He ain't going to look. Yep. They ain't going to know. Yeah. So uh, there was really only one other big name attached to the movie, and that was John DeBont, the guy who did uh, Twister. Ah. Yeah, huh. he agreed to do it because, uh, well, one, he was a European filmmaker, so he was more open to the. <laughs> he wasn't aware that like he had rights. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then two, he was like, "This sounds like this movie will never be made again." He's like, "You guys are just gonna throw a shitload of lions in a locked room with a bunch of white people." Oh my god, I'm in. Yep. I guess I'm I just gonna see film this. death. Yeah, I I like to imagine this heavy European accent. Like I have never doing like a Herzog. Like yeah, yeah, I've yeah. I've never filmed humans death before. I'm excited by the prospect. Yeah, I think they got pretty close on like a volcano shoot. Uh, they were going up to film like an active volcano. I think yeah, if anything had went wrong on there, everybody would have died. But I think it was just Herzog and a couple cameraman. Hell yeah. Yeah. He ate his shoe. I can't respect a man who eats his shoe. No, no, it was because his buddy had finally finished a feature film and he had promised him, like, if you actually do something, I will eat my shoe. <laughs> so, anyway, that so they got their guys now, right? They, uh, they just, they're just going to be played by the family because um, no one else is going to do it. Their, their daughter, uh, Melanie and John, Jerry and, uh, the other one. <laughs> my <laughs> son's going one's to be a star. So then they go Robbie, Robbie. They so Neil was going to be the main hero lion, but Neil is getting too old, so they just uh, replace him with a new lion named Robbie, who yeah. looks like brave and heroic, you know, which is code for he looked like Simba. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh well, no, because yeah. yeah, Lion King is like nineties. That wouldn't have came out yet. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah. So the villain lion, though, the villain lion was going to go to a tiger or a, a, a guy named Togar. And who is Togar? Togar is one of the first lions that they got at Knob Hill, right? Mm. But he was never let into the house no. because he hated people oh, and was okay. used for black magic rituals. Oh, how nice for him. <laughs> yeah. Why you would use the lion that hates people on the film set, I do not know. Because uh, here's the thing, and I think yeah. this is this comes from them being around these fucking cats so much. Every single lion is scary and intimidating. It doesn't have to be Togar. Literally, a, like, any of them are horrifying to look at. I guess, like, whenever you're just kind of, like, filming it, you get numb to the experience. So, like, maybe they did think, like, hey, we need a really scary tiger to sell this. Yeah, get one with, like, a big scar on his face. He, they do actually give him a fake scar, and yeah. they spray paint his mane black. Oh. And, like, a bunch of fake blood all over the teeth. Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, no, it is, like, every, like, lame, like, cheesy way to do it. That is yeah. 100% what they did. Yeah, they put spider webs in his fur, so he looks scary. <laughs> well, maybe not that one. Damn. So, Steve Martin. Steve Martin, not that one. Not that Steve Martin. Oh, yeah. Yep, he's an employee. He was an employee at Soledad Canyon before the buyout, and then just kind of chose that he was... He just decided he was going to become the de facto animal trainer, right? Yeah, it's me. I get to. I'm going to train him. The standard method used in, like, movies in the circus to train a cat is you basically just isolate it from any distractions over a long period of time. You just have it do the thing of just a bunch, right? And you just keep doing that over and over and over again. You do it in, like, eight hours, and you take a break. Eight hours, take a break, right? Yeah. Steve Martin's methods were a bit different. Oh, he and his students okay. would manage really large groups of cats and expose them to other cats and human contact all at once with control methods to acclimate them to human contact. Oh, OK. These are all directly for the book. Here's how you train these fucking lions. This is all this is the extent of their training. I'm not even like I'm not even like messing with you. So these are quotes from the book. This is how they do it. You can distract lions with a twig in one hand and use it to establish authority. It's not that's not elaborated on. They just say that you could do that. Yeah, pick up that stick and wave it at him. 
However, Joe, if you use the stick too much, if a lion sees you without the stick, you'll be viewed as vulnerable uh-huh. and seen as prey. Yeah, yeah. You you ain't looking presidential there. You got to carry around a big stick, and that way if somebody calls you gay, you can whack them on the side of the head. Yeah. That's what Truman said. If you shout no while crossing your arms, you can usually halt a lion's charge. Mm. And if that doesn't work, call its bluff. If you bald bull a lion, you'll embarrass them and they'll usually stop their charge. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, no, they're very skittish. They're shy around cameras. Everybody knows this. And then, yeah, if you embarrass them just a little bit, they back down right away. Uh, lions hate fire extinguishers. That's oh, the full yeah. tip. They just okay. they just don't like them. <laughs> lions hate fireworks. <laughs> they they don't understand fireworks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't those... tamper with a lion's food. Oh, don't mm. tamper with their mating, and don't oh, randomly yeah. become possessed. Oh, that's they pretty get, much it. They get so pissed off if you try to get like a lion to stop boning. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, because I don't. Cats have spikes on their dick. I don't know if lions do. But yeah, like cat mating, it's like a big ass process. So if you interrupt that shit, you're done. Yeah, she mentioned in her book, uh, she would just be sitting there in Gumpsterville, which Uh-oh. I'll explain what Gumpsterville is later. What a nice town. But she'd be at Gumpsterville and she'd just hear the lions fucking from like two miles away. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, they the female ones like just scream in pain whenever the dick comes out. Because, yeah, it's like spiked uh like on the yep yeah so yeah, that yeah. it can't so that it can't come out yep yeah it can't be fucking any other cats then yep so he's got his crew on standby so he starts advertising the canyon right this is all pre-production so he's trying to get the initial funds to yeah. kick off like real filming yeah right? come and play with the lion only fifty dollars a hundred for the whole family yeah he starts small right He opens up the doors to the neighbors. It doesn't specify which neighbors, so I'm choosing to believe it's the old Knob Hill ones. Yeah, just very pissed off neighbors. Yep, he guides them inside to the most socialized cats, right? Yeah. He opens up the gate, and the second he does, Casey, the cat they've raved from a cub, sprints from the enclosure and pounces on an eight-year-old boy. (laughs) Oh, well, in in that lion's defense, a boy does look like a big turkey. And that that is a big fat turkey. Yeah, that looks pretty, pretty delicious. Like a big ass turkey leg. The neighbors did not return. They they managed Mm -mm. to just pull the lion off and then they left. They they did not give him four million dollars. They were willing to finance it. Damn. Nope, they did not give him that. What do you mean? I can I can I can get these lions to attack that boy anytime you want. If he fucking up his homework, if he put a skateboard (laughs) through a patio window. Oh, boy, these lions are going to mess him up. Another time, Steve Martin, remember the animal trainer guy? Yeah. He's showing the compound around to some Japanese investors, right? Oh, okay. They're checking everything out, seeing how the canyon works, and then they hear someone screaming. So they run over and they like peek around a wall and they see Noel stripped to his underwear, covered in blood, screaming and chasing a lion. Hey, you get back (laughs) here. You get back here. That's my beat. Stop biting me. Uh, they don't elaborate on it in the book I wanted like he was just screaming and chasing it like the lion wasn't chasing him he was like he had like two huge fucking slashes in his neck mm. and just I don't know yeah I don't know yeah. what that situation that's not the first time that happens by the way that, that was only one of two I cut the other one out for time yeah yeah get, that's my last work in Nintendo controller you get that out of your mouth <laughs> so Tippy and Noel aren't sure why no one wants to invest just a small load of a million dollars into Roar. Oh, I can't believe it either. Yeah, no, this is guaranteed to be a huge money maker. A, a bunch of just yeah. random ass lions walking around the home. Everybody wants to see that. So they blame the lack of intimacy scenes and human on human violence oh, as to why no one wants okay. to fund it, right? Yeah. Hollywood just doesn't understand Roar. Uh-huh. So they're like, okay. We're going to play to these people. We're going to film an action-focused demo reel to shop around the studios, since tours don't seem to go very well. Yeah, yeah, and some sexual titillation in the film, too. We're going to interrupt some lion mating. Yeah, yeah, and then we're going (laughs) to fuck with their food. Yeah, just spray some cold water on their balls, see what happens. (laughs) Oh, they really don't like that. (laughs) 
<laughs> so this is the shot they're going to do. OK, uh, it's Tippy as the mom running across tree branches, then dropping down and the lions are leaping over her. Right. OK. Oh, sure. That nice, simple shot to get. Yeah. So they <laughs> they do the shot a couple times, but they need to make sure it's just right. Mm -hmm. They admitted in the book by this point that this again, direct fucking quote. No scene involving the animal cast could be directed to any extent. No, uh-uh. Yeah, you pretty much just gotta film them and take what you get. Yep, all they could do is basically have PAs with the big food buckets standing off camera, right? That's really mm. about all they could do. Yeah, come over this way, please, and you might get meat. It's take number five, right? And the cats are just bored of it, right? They've yeah. done it five times. They don't really give a shit anymore. They're full. So she runs across... Yeah. Falls on her stomach onto a lower branch and holds on tight, right? The lions start jumping over her to get to the food. All except for Berries, another one of the fucking house lions. Berries stops, looks at her fucking pit mommy, and pounces on her back and clamps her teeth into her skull. Uh, yeah, giving you a kiss, So, mom. Joe, would, hold on. Would you believe if I told you this exact situation happened two weeks earlier on the film set? Oh, no. You mean these animals are just badly behaved? Yep. So their son, John, was walking Togar, the villain lion, his son, Tongaru, and tripped on a rock. And that was all it just instantly. Yeah. As soon as he fell, that thing had his fucking his uh, fangs right into his skull again. Yeah. So just like a zoo, right? The canyon has enrichment activities for the animals. The big cat's favorite toys are big fucking bowling balls that they crush like jawbreakers. A bowling ball is the same size as a human head, Joe. Yeah, like, I'm I'm really surprised that, like, they didn't get, like, any brain bleed shit or nothing like that, but... Yeah, they, they fucking... I mean, they got fucked up from this. Like, Tippy was saved. Like, Noel ran over, hoisted the cat up by, like, the scruff of the neck, and just threw it in the Down. water. Down! Down! Bad! <laughs> just make them into a demon. Yeah. He's got, like, a big gallon spray bottle. <laughs> I have a spray bottle. They, uh, I used a label maker at my old job, and it has, like, the radioactive symbol, and it says shitty kitty spray. Oh, yeah. I had to use that liberally on the white cat because she kept getting into the Christmas tree. Oh, was she trying to climb up it and knock it down? Yeah, she's being a real fucking asshole. Oh, I better grab her yeah. by the scruff and throw her into a raging river. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know oh. what? No, you should get 70 more cats and try to make a movie about cats in your <laughs> home. Uh, for John, by the way, they saved their son when a couple PAs charged the lion with a piece of, with a piece of plywood. Mm. Yeah, the two by four just spanking the lion <laughs> away from the boy. Is that what it takes to become a best boy, Joe? Do you have to chase a lion? Um, yeah, it's a, 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 lot of, a lot of grab assing on set. Yeah, you get goosed. <laughs> you get goosed a lot as a PA to get under your, like, uh, under the pits. You're goosed? Is that where they just grab your armpit? Yeah, they, like, they, they put their fingers in a pointy kind of, like, pattern, and then they poke at you, poke at you under the armpits. And, yeah, a lot of times you're, like, you're grabbing something. You're, like, you're trying to move a light or something, and they goose you. And you yeah, gotta be careful not to what... drop it. Is that when you, how, how many gooses did you take before you snapped on set? Oh, the, at least 35, and then, yeah, I was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was trying to dig a grave, and uh, they tried goosing me, and I, that's it. You do this one more time, you're going in there. <laughs> so John, right, he got 25, 25 stitches in his skull, which I think is less than you had from your car accident, dude. Oh, I didn't get stitches. They didn't stitch me yeah. up. No, they just left. No, they left all the dirt and shit all over my arm and just sent my ass home. <laughs> oh my god! I, no, I yeah, I wasn't that. insured. Yeah, I wasn't insured. Oh, we're not even gonna. We're not even gonna give you a paper towel. No, no. Yeah, no. I was in the. I was in the hospital for two hours. I got a cat scan and an X ray, and that was. I got billed for thirty five thousand dollars for that. Jesus Christ! Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tippy, by the way, uh, when she had, when she went to the hospital, uh, she had to get her head shaved to dress the wound, but she told them, no, you're going to have to go around it because I can't get a haircut because both of them returned to the film set after 24 hours. They were, it was a Joe Buck car crash is how fast they were, you know, that turnaround yeah. to get back there. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, and yeah, no, she, there's no way she could be in the film with like a wig or something like that. Yep, or just like maybe film a different scene. Or like put an, a hat on her. Or... Yep. So what, so what the fuck's going on, right? Like, what, like you just picked up on something. Like, why are they so fucking desperate to get this demo reel, like, now? Couldn't it wait? Like, what's the big deal? Who, who gives a shit? So the reason they couldn't wait is that they were hemorrhaging, if you could believe this, hemorrhaging cash. It turns out the whole time they never stopped accepting cats. Oh, it yeah, was costing, bring them in. And this is 80s. This is 80s money. $16,000 a week just to keep the canyon running to like pay the people there and feed these stupid cats. Oh, yeah. That's probably up to like 180000 a week. Yeah, something like that now. Yeah. So here's the current the current animal count. And this is like right at the start of filming. They have 132 big cats, three North African sheep, several Aye. tropical birds, some Canadian geese. Yeah, if, if we put uh, ears... African- if we put ears on the sheep, they'll look like cats from a distance. <laughs> they have an African elephant named Timbo and a couple of rented orangutans for authenticity. <laughs> yeah. The orangutans do not show up in the movie. I don't know. I don't know why they rented them. <laughs> just running a muck with a camera. <laughs> just yanking on lion's tails. Yeah. Oh, and is it whatever like a uh, and uh, like a monkey films something? That footage is actually public domain because he can't own it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that real famous like shot of like the monkey taking a selfie. That's public domain. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. They finished the demo reel. Like, oh, his his wife just got fucking scalped and his son got attacked by a lion. But that's okay. I got my movie done. So he goes up to Time Warner, right? Like, he goes up there, he's like, hey, here's my pitch for Roar. Also, can I have my 15% cut from The Exorcist now? It's been three years. No, it never made a cent, The Exorcist. It was a failure. Never got a profit. <laughs> so they look over the demo, right? They're checking out the script, and they're asking him questions like, oh, so what's, uh, you're filming in a canyon, huh? Is that Union? Where are you filming at? What, what do you got there? And then they look down at him. They blow cigar smoke in his face. They're like, listen. You want your 15% cut? Show me the fucking contract. Mm-hmm. There was no contract, Joe. He had an oral agreement for the revenue share. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. That, that, yeah, that yeah. happened to, like, a good amount of people, yeah. Uh, where they would just, like, trust what, like, another human being says and then just lost everything. So what I think happened here is I think they saw, like... In the book, they say that, like, they, they requested all the files, and he's like, I swear to God, I signed it, but there was nothing there, so I, you know. Yeah, they could have destroyed it. I think it. we both know what they did. Yeah, they destroyed it. So what I think they did is they saw, because he explained to them what Roar was going to be, and they're like, oh, he is fucked financially. There is no way he could fight us legally. Let's just tell him to eat shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yep. what's he going to do? He doesn't have the money to fucking sue him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not, yeah, I mean, not too much has changed in 40 years, but... <laughs> Maybe a few less lions. Now they're CGI lions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pumas oh, don't yeah, exist no, anymore. That's, fuck, that's right. There was an entire movie of shitty CGI lions. It was the Lion King remake. Oh, oh, yeah. No, that movie no, cost, that was... Uh, <laughs> the CGI Lion King remake cost, I think I did the math, it was like 48 times more than the entire cost of Roar. Yeah, no, no, that film was, it was still iconic and beautiful, and you're actually wrong if you didn't go pay to see that in theaters. You're killing cinema. <laughs> so, yeah, so so he was spending money, assuming he was going to get, like, his $65 million cut, right? Or whatever it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, fuck, dude. He needs $3 million to fund the movie for six months, right? So he goes into overdrive. He starts, like, going into... This is where I imagine he went and he met, like, the Japanese investors and shit. Somehow, he manages to sweet-talk a British company named EMI into agreeing to give them the funding they needed. EMI, well, he comes into there saying, like, hey, can we have three mil? And they're like, okay, we're going to give you one mil. Mm-hmm. But actually, we're only going to give you half up front. <laughs> oh, yeah, $500,000. You can make a movie on that, right? Yep, so he gets $500,000. And that's it, right? Yeah. So he's wrapping that up in British. But then there's a problem in the canyon. Oh, one damn. One worker gets drunk. 
Mm. Right? Like an underpaid worker gets <laughs> yeah. drunk. Let's loose the lions. He steals two lions. Yeah, I'm gonna sell these. Yeah, I'm gonna sell these. Yeah, I got a rummage sale this week, and I'm gonna see if I can sell these. Well, it's a much better purpose. So he apparently stole the two tigers because the people in the local bar didn't believe him that he worked with cats. Yeah, look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah look at them. Give me a shot and look at them. Yeah, I get free shots because <laughs> I brought in tiger him. cubs. So he left and like he was drunk as a skunk, right? Oh, yeah. And then he never shows up in town. Instead, they find the Jeep just like off in the ditch. And two two tigers in a grain silo. I imagine he sobered up real fucking quick and then just left town because you could do that in the seventies. Yeah, 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 yeah. There weren't no Facebook to track down where you are. Yep. And then again, two weeks later. So this is this is my theory. Is I think the dude came back and did it again. So two weeks later, right? They do the nightly head count, and one of the mm. adult female lions is missing yeah if you know anything the female lions are the ones that go and like hunt and shit right oh okay yeah the dad just lazes about watching lion super bowl (laughs) oh i'm sorry it was a different worker the first one just got drunk as a skunk and just left this one had a they called it a book a pay disputes and just left one of the gate opens Mm. well yeah that'll happen yeah that's what they say. Fuck you. Pay me. <laughs> so now you'll never believe this, Joe. But Soledad Canyon was not a licensed animal sanctuary. It had no insurance. Oh, no. What do you mean? Just like a big pit in the ground isn't like legally allowed to take care of 80 lions. <laughs> so if a lion escaped like, again, you keep underestimating. It's 130 lions oh, and three oh. African sheep. And yeah. an elephant named Timbo and two orangutans, Joe. Yeah, no, those sheep you really gotta keep an eye out because yeah, they could like trample over like some tomatoes or whatever in people's gardens. That would be really messed up if those got loose. <laughs> so if a lion escaped and attacked someone, right? Like it's it's all over, right? They'd be paying that shit out of pocket. Can't it be done? The police would be like, "You need to fucking stop." They would just come in with like a Gatling gun and kill every <laughs> single every single thing with four legs they see in there. Have you seen um those like Cabela's big hunts for like the PS3? There's like you're like I'm playing I'm an animal conservationist. And what you do is you're in a Jeep and you're just mowing down every living creature in Africa. Yeah, yeah. We got to shotgun these ground squirrels. They're taking over. We got to find that guy's fucking YouTube channel where he's just <laughs> braiding squirrels with a BB gun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, yeah. And fucking Punisher shit on the screen. Yeah, yeah. He's got like <laughs> a he's got like a $1,500 like air, uh, uh, well, yeah, I don't know if it's like a BB gun or if it's like airsoft or if it would be like a gel pellet or whatever, but he's got like the most expensive <laughs> gun he can get. He he's looks got a like, gun that uh, that's not illegal for him to own yet. Yeah, yeah. And he's like the Chris Kyle of like squirrels. He absolutely hates these little furry <laughs> cocksuckers. And he baits them into his yard with food. And then he just kind of waits outside for like a couple hours a day. And whatever squirrels he sees, he just beams right in the side of the head. <laughs> God. No, you're forgetting the funniest part, which is they go pow. And then he'll take his fucking nail gun and shoot it into the wood next to him. So his neighbors don't realize what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I ain't killing squirrels. I'm working on my shed. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm working but, out my manuscript. Yeah, but then whenever you go into his shed, the walls are just covered in squirrel corpses. <laughs> 800 of them just lining the walls. He's got furry walls now. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this lion gets out. It's a big deal. If it attacks anyone, it's all ogre, right? Yeah, oh yeah. So it's the butt crack of dawn. They gather up a posse of 20 people and scour the canyon, which is slow. Because not only is it a canyon that's, you know, in the middle of summer in California, but it's also full of rattlesnakes and wild cats, like wild, wild cats, not their wild cats. Nah, don't worry. Me and Bill Williamson can handle this. We're a posse. (laughs) Well, they don't. don't They lose the trail. They lost it. Oh, okay, Yeah. So day two. Uh, Noel comes back from overseas from doing that EMI thing where he gets a sixth of the money that he wanted. Damn. Oh my god, you've lost my favorite lion! You've lost Murdery. Yeah. 
Actually, they, it did have a it did have a name. I forget what it was, but it was like like Daisy or something stupid. Oh, um, uh, maybe like uh, uh, oh, maybe like uh, Slutty. Like that lion was just known Slutty. for fucking all the other male lions. Yeah. So he comes back and he assembles forty people and a helicopter. Right. Mm -hmm. So he hands out radios to everyone and tells them, and this fucking this made me have to put the book down for a second. If they find anything, to let him know they found, quote, the perfect location. Oh, yeah, 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 over the radio. That way the police don't hear, like, yeah, the big tiger's over here, I'll get him. Yep, exactly. It was because he was afraid of hunters and the police would show up if anyone found out. But I guess just fuck the neighbors, right? Like, yeah, first you yeah, try to yeah. kill their kid, and now you're not going to tell them that there's a lion on the loose? Yeah, yeah. No, no we we had that same kind of system over at the Roxy. Like, yeah, whenever we'd just see, like, dead mice or live mice, we would, like, say, like, oh, hey, there's popcorn over there. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That way people don't panic whenever they hear that there's, like, live mice, like, where food's located and where they're going to be watching their movies and stuff like that. Joe, did you ever sweep popcorn behind the silver screen? Oh, yeah, yeah. Under that curtain? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, not popcorn, but popcorn. Oh, actual, like, popcorn? Like... No, like, rats. Oh, dead mice. Um... <laughs> I, no, I, I probably saw, like, maybe, like, maybe five to ten dead mice in my <laughs> tenure, I think. <laughs> because, yeah, once you found them, you were supposed to pick them up. You weren't supposed to just, like, sweep them under the, under the carpet or whatever. Oh, I guess that's a good of you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, day three, and it's looking desperate, right? Three days without food and water. Yeah. Like, they're afraid the lion is going to attack the neighbors or their oh, cattle. Oh, it's gonna eat something, all right, yeah. You got 40 Jill Buckleys out there that are just kind of kicking dirt, like, looking around a little bit. Uh, I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, nine o'clock, and one of the new employees, one that hadn't been fucked over by a pay dispute yet, he speaks up over the radio and says, hey, I found the perfect location, just hanging out under a bridge like half a mile away. Mm, probably getting some shade. Yeah, they were just hanging out in the shade and like she didn't, she just went back. Oh. No problem at all. No one knew anything. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that sometimes happens if like a cat escapes your home. Like they'll spend like a day running amok and they get it out of their system and then they're ready to come back inside. So with the EMI funding, they could build all the crew quarters and sets, right? So, and again, he puts this five feet over the flood line. Uh, they build a camera shop, a wardrobe, an editing room, machine shop, electrical shop, a kitchen commissary, mm. two, and this is very smart of him, two emergency helipads. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just in case they have to life flight eight PAs <laughs> out at one time. <laughs> a 10,000 pound freezer for cat food, yeah. a whole ass animal hospital and barracks style housing for the crew. Because remember, they're in the middle of fucking nowhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be 80 miles to the closest hospital or whatever. Yep. And they got 100 cast and crew at this time. Like, this is a pretty fucking big deal. Uh, they also finish up the Africa House set, which is like the main set. They put it right in the middle of the canyon on, like, a bunch of telephone poles, and they dam up the river, like, a little downstream to make kind of like a miniature lake. Oh. They plant a bunch of cottonwood trees to make it look like Africa, and it's like, awesome, this looks great. You know, hey, pre-production is finished now. We got our set, we got our script, we got our amazing actors, and Roar finally begins filming October 1st. 1976. Oh, yeah. They've got like a nice 500 grand to make the film with. That'll last them a lot, I think. On October 8th, 1976, Roar stops filming. Oh, yeah. Damn, no more meat money. We're out. So, Noel and Mativo, his research assistant, and Mativo, for whatever reason, they insisted on having a dude that's actually from Africa. Ah. Uh, they're filming, they're rehearsing the African house scene. Okay. Where the two of them are talking to each other and the room is just fucking teeming with lions and tigers, right? Yeah, oh yeah. And Mativo, yeah. you'll remember this from watching the movie, because he's the only black man in Africa. He's standing like stock fucking still, like completely straight up and looking intensely uncomfortable. What do you mean? He didn't want to just like hang out with like the lions and play with them a bit and roll around on the ground with them? No. It was actually part of his contract that he would not be on set 
unless he was doing his scene at that time, if there were fucking lions there. He was like, if there's a single lion on set, I am not entering there. That's what Harrison Ford said on Indiana Jones. Like, if there's a snake here, I ain't filming with it. You put glass up where the snakes go. Oh, uh, yeah, I bet he did. No, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. In um, the actual, like, film reels, you can see glass reflection. But I think on most of the home media releases, they edited that out. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's pretty fucking reasonable. If a snake bites his face, like, what's his acting career after that? Yeah, no, he ain't gonna be no Blade Runner. Yeah. So, in the middle of the scene, out of nowhere, fucking Casey again comes over in the middle of the shot and just bites Noel's hand for no reason. Mm-hmm. And you can see this in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's yeah, everybody's just constantly bleeding in this film or like limping or. And it's got the fucking lighthearted, like, and people are running for their lives and fucking screaming and covered in blood and mucus, dude. Yeah. It's horrifying. Yeah. Like, a lot of, like, the, the on-set, like, injury descriptions, it sounds more like Friday the 13th than a family film. <laughs> so, he gets bit, right? And he's evac to the hospital via the helipad, right? He tells the doc, he's like, listen, I just want the wound cleaned and some antibiotics. But the ER doc is like, no, 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 we need to close the wound. And actually, Noel was right on this one, because when a lion bites you, they inject your bloodstream with billions of harmful bacteria like a Komodo dragon, dude. Mm. Well, yeah, that's because the lions are just constantly licking their own ass. Mm hmm. They, yeah. they had to edit the movie around that, too. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, licking ass and then shitting on camera. They didn't want any of that in the film. So the doctor stitches his hand closed and within like a day and a half, he's he comes right back and he's got advanced blood poisoning. Oh, oh and they, yeah. pull, they lock his ass to the ICU. They put him in an asylum. Get away from these lions. So Noel's out, right? Like he has to, <laughs> he's sitting in a hospital bed. He can't act right now. Oh, he can still be filmed. Drag him out in the bed. <laughs> Have the lions run over him. <laughs> So they're like, they're like, okay, fine. We're going to film some of the family scenes for when we're not with him in the movie, right? Yeah. So their daughter, Melanie, is getting ready. And all of a sudden, fucking Casey and Tongaru, so two lions that have already tried to kill them, snap and just start fighting each other, right? Not play fighting, but like to the death fighting. Yeah, it's trying to decide who gets to be pack leader. So the handlers managed to get in there, I assume using like sticks or something. Stun guns. And stop them from killing each other. Nope, no stun guns. Oh, There's no. no stun guns. They, they thought it was uh, inhumane. Cruel. Yeah, nasty. Yep. In a moment of clarity, Melanie turns to her mom, Tippy, and is like, Mom, I don't want to come out of this with half a face. And she leaves. She's like, I'm not being part of Roar anymore. Daughter, you're, you disappointed me. Don't you want to be a Hollywood actress like your mother? She did actually, Melanie Griffith, uh, Griff, no, Melanie Griffin, she did uh, go on to act in a couple other movies. Her performance is terrible in this one, by the way. She fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, most of the film itself, I mean, there isn't really like any kind of acting performances to speak of. It's more kind of like daily footage, kind of loosely stitched together. So Noel returns from the hospital, and he's disappointed, but he understands that his daughter doesn't want to die for his cat movie, right? But luckily, Joe, Melanie has a friend named, I shit you not, Patsy, ah, who is more than happy yeah. to take her spot yeah, in the Yeah, take film. the fall for me, why don't you, huh? <laughs> so they're like, okay, fine. And they redo all of the family scenes they've already done to include this new girl, Patsy, in yeah. place of their daughter. Ah, so, well, just uh, blend the two <laughs> actresses together. Nobody will notice. Yeah. Honestly, they could have. I don't think anyone would have given a shit. Yeah, hey, yeah, but you wear, like, a Melanie mask for the film. And, uh, yeah, we'll just put you in the yeah. background for a while. Her face got clawed off by a lion while we stitched it together with 25 stitches. Yeah. Anyway, so now it's nearing the end of November. And time is rapidly becoming an issue. Yeah. Everybody knows that lions burrow underground when the winter hits. So they don't have too much longer <laughs> to film with them. Uh, those cottonwood trees are native to Africa, right? Oh, and they're turning yeah. brown way fucking faster because apparently California is different than like the Sahara. Wait, what? 
What do you mean? Like the the <laughs> temperature is like not the same, and like the soil. So their schedule is already a month and a half behind due to reshooting the Patsy scenes, and you know the dad being hospitalized, and the son being hospitalized, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the mom being hospitalized. Uh, what's a little bit of blood poisoning and gangrene on the film set? Yeah, with these, with the tree is now like constricting even further. Honestly, the only times that they can even fucking film are like early summer to late fall. Like you really have maybe six months. Yeah. And some of those days in summer, it's too hot because it's still California. So the cats won't do anything but lounge around. <laughs> they won't they won't act. They're too hot. Mm, they're divas. They're on set divas. So, hey, if I don't get my 55 pounds of elk meat, I will not be jumping on the couch for this scene. <laughs> so, how do you speed things up, right? You've only got maybe a month and some change before the end of the year. So, yeah. how, how do you speed it up, right? There's got to be a way. Yeah, you mix in Monster and Red Bull into the lion meat. And, oh, yeah, that'll fire these lions up. Yeah, again, good acting. So, there's a whole team that's dedicated to breaking down and erecting corridor fencing to move cats to different sets all throughout the canyons, right? Oh, okay, yeah. And this would take hours of the filmable day, right? Like, you know this. Setting up a set takes fucking forever. Yeah, but imagine oh, yeah. setting up the set, but then also you have to, like, put lion up proof these, it. like... Yeah, you have to lion-proof it and get them over there. Oh, it's, it's hard enough getting your actors to move into the location you need them, much less lions. Because, yeah, they'll be, like, lounging around. They'll be, like, looking through their Facebook or whatever. Like, Time to move. Gotta get on it. You gotta find two of them, like, in their trailers. Playing Animal Crossing Pocket Camp when they're supposed to be filming the Benevolent Buckley show. Oh, yeah, that'll get you. So, I don't. they don't say who came up with this, but some crazy motherfucker pitches an idea. Instead of using the temporary fencing, right? Yeah, we can use chicken bravest, wire. No, let's try. I wish it was that. The bravest immigrant workforce in history would line up, stick out their arms, and hold hands to form a human hallway. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's cheaper than getting, like, fences, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they open it up, and it just, like, works, right? Mm. And what's even more fucked up is later on, and I think I forgot to put this down, but when they have less and less people, you know what they do to, to stretch it out? They all grab sticks. So they have sticks so they can go longer. Oh, yeah. The sticks intimidate the lions. They'll never bite us with these. <laughs> so they try to cram in one more big scene before shutting down for the winter, right? No, oh, OK. I'm sure nothing can go wrong on that. Yeah, the trying to cram a scene with uh with uh yeah, but it's the family escaping on boat and running from tigers in the river. A shot that you really want to rush. Oh yeah, yeah, yo, you can get that done like half a day. Yep, then you can film like the scene with like the lion looking through the jam in the cupboard. We can use the other half day on that. <laughs> so John DeBont wants to get a shot of a leaping tiger from underneath, just like he did before. Well, he could, well, he actually couldn't get the one from before because the actress had like a lion that like bit her skull, so oh, he couldn't okay. get that one. I know, like, um, whenever you want to make your horse jump like really high in the air, you sp you put like ginger in his ass. What? But that's a true, yeah, that's a true like um horse training thing. If you want to make your horse look lo younger and livelier, or if you want them to get to jump higher, yeah, you stick fresh ginseng in their asshole. Which one is it? Is it ginger or ginseng? Oh, well, one ginger, of those I'm going to put in there and it's going to be real happy. The other one's going to kill me. Yeah, I believe it's ginger. It's, a, they, it's like it gives them a spicy butthole and they don't like that. They get like more livelier. Uh, <laughs> spicy butthole. Yeah. But yeah, that was like a way that was like in the like olden times. That's how you would trick somebody into buying like an old horse is. Yeah, you stick up. You stick a vegetable in their ass and then it, it makes them look young for a day. Oh, so John DeBont wants this shot, right? God, fucking horse assholes. Yeah. Noel likes the shot, but insists that they wear some kind of protection. So he gives each of the people there that are doing this shot a football helmet. And I really want to believe it says go Wildcats on it. Yeah, because uh, football helmets don't even protect people playing football from brain damage. How's it going to protect <laughs> against a lion? So maintenance and the PAs dig a pit, which I imagine felt like digging your own fucking grave. Yeah, yeah. 
They say, yeah, if you're going to film a lion movie, you have to dig two graves, one for the lion and one for yourself. <laughs> uh, so the scene's on, right? They got their hole. They're all hiding inside of it. And they got a little tarp and some like, oh, okay. bushes and shit on top. They're all running off to the side, yelling and screaming. And once she's off camera, Tippy turns around and sees one of the lions is investigating a weird bump on the ground. Oh, shit. That's Dabont. She's like, holy shit, dude, get out of there. Watch out. But they think she's still acting because, again, 90 yeah, percent yeah. of the movie is her screaming. Yeah. Just like a, any like a David Lynch movie as well. Just 90 percent screaming. Yep, they take a swipe. And they take John DeBont's scalp off from back to ah, front, sew it dude. back on. He didn't. He wasn't even wearing the helmet because what he did is he took it off to get a better look through the viewfinder. He took it off because he was sweaty. <laughs> so he's evac to the hospital, and the whole time there's a PA that's keeping his scalp attached with a towel. Oh, oh that was nice of him. Yeah. Like maybe uh, like a couple of those like uh, just n- the clips you put over your nose when you're smelling bad stuff. Just stick a couple of them on his scalp. There's a quote for that PA, too. They say, keep my day's pay and buy him some flowers. Mm. I'm yeah, done. Man. Yeah. So the crew, like the crew obviously is like, we've seen four evacs, two within the past month. So they all quit. They're they're gone. They're, they're not oh my fucking God. dealing with this you, shit. You couldn't so the like movies like done. You can't, like, keep all those people working with, like, almost no pay? With, like, lions and shit? Yeah. Zero pay. Yeah. (laughs) The fact that multiple times lions were taken from the facility due to Mm -hmm. pay disputes? Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, goddammit, they sure me out three weeks to pay. I'm going to sell this lion on eBay. They ain't going to stop me now. (laughs) There is a whole... You could give them to... You could give lions to anyone you want. um... Up until, like, the 2000s, yeah. it was really easy to, like, ship monkeys to the U.S. There would be ads, like, in the back of comic books, and, yeah, you could get, like, really? yourself, like, a little, um, uh, those little, like, pest monkeys for, like, 20 bucks. Hell, <laughs> do they come frozen? Do you have to put well, them in some water? Of them, some of them came dead. Uh, you would just get the crate and open up a dead monkey. But then most <laughs> of the time, if it, if it wasn't dead on arrival, most of the time you would open it up and it would start shrieking and jumping out and then just get it. It would try to get out of the house by whatever means possible and then it would just run away. <laughs> or it would attack you, yeah. Yeah, or you could get monkey rabies. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a different monkey R word. Anyway. Ah, uh, so. yeah. Roar. I can't say that one on YouTube. <laughs> I say, hold on, I'm sorry. We need to stay on this monkey thing for a little bit. I sent you those videos, right? Where oh. it was uh, the like like documentary footage of monkeys fighting and the comments were all fucked up. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. It was that- like people saying like, like, oh man, they should have had a slow motion when that monkey got killed and like time stamping it. It felt more uncomfortable than when you told me about the pedophiles on YouTube that would take like children's yeah, videos yeah. and re upload them. Yeah, and they would time stamp them. There would be like pedophile playlists of just like children playing with like time stamps of like the footage they want to see. God. Ugh. Yeah, but no, there was, um, there was like a YouTube monkey torture ring for a while. Um, where, yeah, it was getting, like, real bad. But then, yeah, some of the Kiwi Farms people tracked them down. So, Roar's on hiatus. Nothing's going on. So, Noel's like, okay, I have no fucking money. So, he opens up his own commercial filming company and starts shooting advertisements inside the canyon, right? Like, using some of the animals or whatever he can. Yeah, drink a Pepsi next to a lion. <laughs> Uh, this brings in some money, right? But the family has to start selling off some of their assets to keep the canyon funded. Because again, $16,000 a week just for the canyon. Like, I don't even know if that's including the cast and crew. Yeah, yeah. So they, um, Tippy sells a fancy fur coat that Alfred Hitchcock gave her, which I assume was an unwanted gift, but he was insisting that she had it so she could try and fucking harass her. Yeah, yeah, you would look uh, so they, beautiful in this fur coat. Why don't you take it? <laughs> she, they sell three of their four houses. So they only have, uh, I think they only have Knob Hill. They sold their other houses, which actually, now that I think about it, maybe that makes more sense as to why she would just let the lions piss all over the house, because it's only 25% of your home. Yeah, you, you have got three more houses. Yeah, you got tippy hedron money. Yeah, and that, that never runs out. 
Oh, and then the other thing is uh, she sold her wedding ring. No. So, yeah. so at this point, like, their marriage is pretty much completely falling apart, which is fucked up because in the movie, it's Mark, the guy, like, Mark is Noel. He's the main character. He didn't change Mark's name. Or Mativo, the the African dude. His name was, his last name was Mativo. Oh, okay. They're, um, they're divorced in the movie. And that was written before the two got divorced beforehand, so... Mm, yeah, Ooh. it was an omen. Although, actually, thinking about it even more... See, th- I've gone through revisions of this script, like, three times. I spent 20 minutes before uh, talking about Noel's history and construction in his previous marriages. And it wasn't until uh-huh. I read it out loud that I was like, who gives a fuck? I just want to yeah. hear about these lions. Yeah, well, we yeah they tried to contact like one of his past wives for an interview, and all she could say was just "big lion, big lion" with a wide look in her eyes. <laughs> Wild and crazy look. Yeah. So yeah, th- so they sell a bunch of their shit off, right? But there's some good. Devant tells Noel he'll be coming back after Christmas because he's like, I want, I, I want, I have seen the Ring of Death and what the lions bring to me, and I need to conquer. <laughs> Or he says some weird Herzog shit, right? Yeah, yeah. now I must defeat, I have faced the beast, and now I must face man in Santa Claus form. Yeah. Uh, The other thing, and this is good or bad, depending on who, what kind of person you are. But Melly changes her mind and wants to come back, which means, again, they have to redo all of those scenes to replace Patsy again. Oh, yeah. And she just ends up just chopped out of the film. Yeah, she does a terrible job in the movie. Like, if you watch it, you'll, you if you ever watch it again, you're like, what the hell is she saying? She's mumbling her lines like a 12 year old. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd imagine it's probably hard to get your actors like on mic while the mic man's being chased around by a puma. <laughs> so at this point, actually, the family did briefly consider abandoning the project, right? Oh, oh, no. A film like this that can't be abandoned. It must be completed. The reason they didn't do it is that if they did, how the hell could they unload 130 cats in an elephant, right? They needed to finish the film for the revenue. Otherwise, you can't just open it up like Dr. Doolittle and flood it. Yeah, no, you'd you'd have to just throw them all in like a lake or something. (laughs) Speaking of elephants, I want to talk about Timbo. That son of a bitch Timbo. Oh, yeah, yeah. He makes a brief appearance in the movie. Yep, he absolutely destroys a uh, a boat. But he wasn't actually the first elephant they owned. I read this story and I thought you would find this funny. Okay, so way yeah. back at the beginning, this is when they were first getting their animals. They had a zoo reach out and they're like, hey, we don't have any lions, but do you want this, like, African elephant? Yeah, yeah, we'll find room for him in the film. Yeah, hand him over. So they drive five hours to pick him up, but the night before they got there, some bored teens threw Xanax into the enclosure like peanuts, and the elephant fucking overdosed. Mm, yeah, those goddamn bored teens. <laughs> to a dead, OD'd <laughs> California special baby elephant. Yeah. No, now they've been throwing vape kits into the penguin exhibit, and all those little penguins are hooked. Can't get them to stop huffing now. The problem is they're hooked specifically on the mango flavor. You can't get the mango anymore, Joe. No, it's retired. God damn it! (laughs) That was the last vape pod that I had! Joe, I don't know when your impression of Gothic King Cobra will stop being funny, but it's got at least like six more months. I love it so much. Well, he's still alive right now to enjoy the impression. Once he does OD, it won't be quite as funny. It reminds me of your shitty teenager character. Where, oh, you start, yeah. where you're like, Mom, you fucking, you fucking gay. I wanted, the, I wanted the Jumbo Hulk Funko Pop for Christmas, not the Jumbo Spider-Man. How dare you? You're ruining my life. You're killing me, Mom. You're killing me. <laughs> Timbo is built different, though. Unlike that other elephant, he didn't die. Oh, yeah, he can eat Xanax like nothing. He can eat it like candy. He can eat, yeah, he can eat Xanax like they're Percocets. So crew members... <laughs> it took me a second to get... It took me a second. 
Yeah. Crew members knew what to part. It gave you the giggles with your Percocet. <clears throat> Those are the nice pills. You can you can take like six of them and then pass out. Crew members knew to park on the other side of the lot because Timbo hates cars. He would pick up rocks and throw them at anyone that parked any, like within eyesight of him. Yeah, much like a bored teen. <laughs> yes, yeah, maybe he ate bored teens. Yeah, no, after that, yeah, after he saw his brother die from Xanax, he was over it. Yep, yeah. no more humanity. <laughs> he especially hated one investor's car. <laughs> Uh, it was a I Prius. The, uh, damn, I don't know why the line "No more humanity" got me in my funny bone. <laughs> it was a yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, you know it might have been uh, yeah, yeah. It might have been one of those Teslas, and oh, he was pissed. He saw Elon Musk was doing the Twitter, and he had enough of it, just chucking rocks. Yep. So Noel was given like this rich guy investor a tour. And when he came out, he was like, oh, how interesting. Yes, I will give you $6 million. He comes out to his Rolls Royce, and it had dents all over it and a pile of rocks at the tires. <laughs> For the past hour, Timbo was just wailing on it with stones. There's like, a, there's a big elephant footprint where the trunk used to be. Yep, <laughs> there's a trunk footprint on the trunk. Yeah, and then no more room to store your tire anywhere. Yep, <laughs> it's tired of it. Another story, and this is, this is a classic Timbo. Timbo was going for a walk one evening with John, one of their sons, when he started doing angry elephant noises, right? Oh, Something yeah. about the neighbor on the other side of the fence, there was like a yellow tractor there, and it just pissed him off, right? Yeah, yeah. It's mocking him. So <laughs> one of the other employees was out there on that side and he's like, hey, don't worry, Timbo. Here, look, it's just a tractor. So he goes inside of it and starts it up to prove. <laughs> exactly. So Timbo goes fucking nuts and charges through the fence, right? He blows right through one of the tiger compounds and one of the tigers <laughs> freaks the fuck out and latches onto his face. <laughs> <laughs> he shakes it off and starts stomping and goring the neighbor's tractor with his tusks. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I actually, we had an accident. I accidentally backed into your tractor. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I had a ladder in the back of my car that got poked a couple holes in your tractor. I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> so John and the other worker managed to get a leash on the tiger who's like stunned because it just got thrown into a wall. And uh, they're like, oh, God, what do we do with this thing? And so John, like, drags it into a nearby office, lets go of the leash. It just swooshes out the window, and the tiger just fucking obliterates the office around him. Oh, my God, my loose leaf papers. They're scattered about the room. How will I ever put them back in order? My A6 papers are with my A4s. I'm going to fucking kill myself with Xanax. Uh, yeah, all of my college homework that I half did the minute before class, it's been <laughs> scattered to the wind. What if I need that someday? So they did. So everything settles down, right? Like he's finished murdering that tractor. They take the lion back to the pen and it's fine. But Timbo won't calm down until they give him several cases of beer after yeah. which he falls asleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and Timbo also loved Natty Ice. Timbo he loved, he, yes, it was Natty Ice. I'm almost oh, like 100% yeah. sure it was Natty Ice. Yeah, it's an ice beer. And then, yeah, the, like what normal ice beer, you would scrape the stuff off the top and you throw it away. But Natty Ice is that stuff on the top. And they just bottled it up and sold it to people. Fu Wait, are you fucking with me or is that real? No, that's why. Yeah, that's real. That's real. That's what Natty Ice is. Yeah, it's like the top of ice beer, like ice beer foam. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's March now, right? And they're back on the film set with a mostly new crew. Like, they had to convince a bunch more, like, drunkards and immigrants to help Layabouts, them, right? Yep. Shifty people. Bored teens. Mimes. <laughs> so his next scene, Timbo's scene, is, like, the next big one, right? And it requires him to crush the family's boat and then drop Tippy's character in the river. Oh, so okay. So the boat was originally made of wood, and he didn't really give a shit. Until one of the crew was reminded of when Timbo bust his windshield. 
So they swapped in a metal one, and he fucking hates metal boats. Mm, yeah, yeah, because they they look like another big elephant, and he thinks it's mocking him. They're they're like they're water cars. So that's taken care of. That shot easy. Like he just fucked the thing up. Awesome, great. So now they just like they just need to pick up Tippy, and they just she'll she'll scream and flail. And then the problem is, instead of dropping her, he just gently sets her back down because he thought she was in danger. Mm. Which, if you ask me, I think that's perfectly fine for the movie. I don't yeah. like you could just pick her up and set her down. That's still interesting to look at. Like, who gives a shit? It's no, fine. no, cover in raw meat and maybe the animal will do something different this time. So it's take 13. Timbo picks her up with his trunk. However, this time she loses her grip on his head uh, and like kind of slips, right? She gets one foot on his tusk and accidentally yanks on his ears, just like that oh, tiger, man. right? Uh, yeah. So he uh, gets surprised. Let me tell you, that, that might have pissed him off. Yep, and he shakes his head, he gets all surprised and pissed about it, and when he shakes his head, fucking crushes Tippy's ankle with his tusk, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, absolutely shatters the fucking thing. She gets airlifted out, right? Like, she like she finally falls in the water, right? Which I think is in the movie, because, like, you'll see that she gets picked up, and she's like, ah, ah, ah. Like it's like it becomes a real scream in the middle well, yeah, of the yeah, shot. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the most iconic lines in Roar. Just my ankle, my ankle. That gray cocksucker broke my fucking ankle. Yeah, I'm gonna turn him into lion meat. I yeah, do remember that, pushed, that line. That pushed it, yeah, into an R rating. Yeah, that's partially why it never made back its budget. So she gets airlifted out and then comes back like that evening, right? Mm. According to the book. Part of the reason she came back so soon was that for morale purposes, she didn't want to miss the bi-weekly crew party. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Joe, they started throwing Little Caesars pizza parties. Yeah, yeah. This is better than a paycheck, right? We got old lukewarm pizza. We got bags you can throw in a bucket. Uh, we got a, a desk fan that you can win if you put your name in the jar. But there's no electricity in the barracks. There's no plug-in, so you can't use it until you get home six months from now. Yeah, well, you can think about it spinning, and then that thinking about it will make the air cooler around you in your mind. Hell yeah. So around the same time as this, right, around the same time that their mom's ankle exploded. Oh my god, it exploded just like Alex's dad. Do you remember oh. that story from super early in the podcast, Joe? Uh, he, he had, like, broke his dad's ankle, right? Doing something. Well, what it was is he was playing with his dad at a playground, and his dad, like, jumped off the playground to, like, oh. chase him in fun, and then popped both of his fucking ankles. Oh, oh, okay. I was thinking kind of, it was like a misery situation. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You no, know, it could have like, been. It has yeah. been a while since I, I told that story, so we'll have to, I'll have to double check with him. Yeah, his dad had fucked up. He brought him home Milky Way and said Snickers, <laughs> and then, yeah, that was it. They took the sledgehammer to him. <laughs> Deserved. Yeah. So Jerry, Jerry is their other son, and he's showing off for his new girlfriend, right? He enters one of the enclosures of, again, one of those fucking cats that they raised at home, right? And just start roughhousing with it. Yeah, right? look at this. This big cat's a pussy. Yeah, I can do whatever I want to. I can slap it in the back. I can pull its tail. <laughs> he starts interacting with it the same way I interact with my cat, which... The episode that'll come out before this one, I'm pretty sure, oh, okay. uh, is a noise boys of me and Alex. And halfway into the episode, the cat just starts violently attacking me. Oh, she's just a little sweetie. She don't mean it. So with this line, what happens is they're just messing around. But apparently he had forgotten that this cat loved tennies. And it starts going to take his shoes off. Oh, yeah. The laces attract a big cat. Yeah. Yep, so it goes to try and get the shoes, and it just bites him right in the dick, dude. Ah, <laughs> bites him right oh in the no. dick. <laughs> I was planning on fucking tonight, and now my plans are ruined. <laughs> planning on fucking tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Shortly after this, by the way. My, my condom keeps filling up with blood. This isn't going to work, <laughs> honey. <laughs> Melody is in the Africa house filming a scene, right? This is like maybe a day or two later. She's hiding, you know, hiding from these beautiful yeah. lions, you know, hiding in like a shelf so she doesn't get murdered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just like maybe under a bucket or wherever you think the cats might not see you. 
<laughs> yep, a playful lioness hops into her hiding spot and climbs on her back, right? And oh, puts okay. her paws on her cheeks. Oh, how sweet. And she slips down off of her and gauges six fucking gashes down the side of her face, dude. It's like it's basically like having Freddy Krueger jump up on your back. Uh, so everyone but Mark is in the hospital at this point, right? So they make a family trip to visit their on-call plastic surgeon named, I shit you not, I didn't make this up, Dr. Cadaver. Ah, oh, yes. His name is Dr. <laughs> Cadaver, spelled with a K. Dr. Death. Oof. So the doctor is uh, their family visit to the plastic surgeon. He's treating Melanie and Jerry, like reconstituting his dick, putting Melanie's oh, face yeah. back together. And he tells Tippy, he's like, hey, your leg is black. Your leg has gone gangrenous. Like, you can't plastic surgeon that. You need to go to the fucking ICU. Yeah, you keep it much longer, it's gonna fall off. Keep telling you that. So Jerry and Melanie are out for a few days, and Tippy won't be back for weeks. Filming gets pushed back another six weeks, and again, the crew is just like, fuck this. I, I could go work at, like, I could go work at a Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. I could go make a living wage at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would pay. Yeah, it'd probably be nice, mu- not much nicer at Burger King because, well, you've got customers screaming at you, but most of them don't bite. <laughs> so, Joe, how much worse can it get? Right, your entire family has been hospitalized, and you're almost destitute. Does, does that guy end up getting fucked by a tiger? <laughs> So EMI looks over their filming schedule and is like, hey, you've you've breached a contract. Give us back our money. Give us back five hundred thousand dollars. Would you accept 13 tigers instead? (laughs) EMI refuses the tiger offer and forecloses on their only remaining house. The family Uh, is now fucking homeless. Yeah, yeah. They can live on the streets in a pile of animals. Also, Roar is only 70% done. Also, you remember that scene where she got her head almost crushed? They have to redo it. Ah, yeah, well, we accidentally dropped the negatives in the lake. A a tiger (laughs) knocked me over, and I lost it. I left the cap on. Ah, damn. That happened in, uh... That happened in Butcher? That that happened in, no, Tarakoski's uh, The Sacrifice. They burned down a real giant big house for real... And they, they they just didn't capture it. They had to rebuild the entire thing, do it again. Woof. So at this point, Joe, like, it's hopeless, right? Like, any sane person is just like, all right, I guess we're done, right? Would you agree with that? At this point, you um, just start selling the lions for, like, meat, and you just say, fuck it, and you leave, right? Yeah, because I... There, yeah, if, if there's only 70% done, there isn't really a film to release. Um... I mean, you could maybe chop it down at that point, get it to, like, a 60-minute feature, like, straight to VHS or something like that, but... Just like with Solomon August Andre and the Arctic Balloon Expedition, right? My opinion on these people completely flips at this point, right? Oh, okay. Oh, they become, like, sensible and, like, well-to-do people. <laughs> and, yeah, people who don't mess up anything on, like, a film set. They become, like... They just, like, refuse to ever fucking give up, right? Like, yeah. it isn't, yeah, you're like, you're done. Like, you have no money, you have no fucking house, all you have is these stupid cats. You're not going to make any money from this. All you're going to do is lose money. Like, you, you aren't even going to be able to afford these cats for, like, a year, even if the movie does well, right? Yeah. Well, and, but like, oh my, yeah, well, like, a big giant pain in the ass is that whenever you were shooting on 35mm, the average film canister was 12 minutes. You would get 12 minutes of footage per canister. But, that, like, but it, whenever it runs out, it's, like, a pain in the ass to, like, put more film into it. It's a whole process. You gotta, like, take it apart and put it back together. Yeah, they probably have, like, 70 hours of footage of just tigers, like, lazing about and doing nothing and then just burning through film on this. The shit that they've all gone through has formed this, like, really tight-knit, like, community. It's kind of hard to describe. Like, I love this energy, and I'll tell you right now, Joe, like, if I was there, I'd be working as, like, I'd be roped into this shit, and I'd be working as, like, a gaffer or whatever. As a gaffer, do they fluff the animals? What do they do? 
Uh, no, a, a gaffer, gaffer do? it's, um, you hold up, so I think it's like you kind of like hold up some like audio deafening thing. Um, let me look. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I looked up the Wikipedia and it says it looks like your your job is to tamper with uh, animal food, oh. mating, and possessiveness. Oh, it also says oh, that you're not okay, allowed yeah. to use fire extinguishers. No. Oh, yeah. It scares the lions too bad. That would be cruel. Just let them eat you. <laughs> Just let them do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will only take off like a hand or like uh, uh, most of an arm or maybe like some of your upper torso as well. But they'll stop at some point, probably. So the family and remaining crew pool all their money, buy a bunch of trailers and to move into Soledad Canyon. Because remember, yeah. they don't have any fucking house anymore and they're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they form a trailer park community called Gumpsterville, which is named after the brand of dumpsters that they have there. Yeah, yeah, we live in the trash. Come visit. We're making a movie. There's a really funny line in the book where uh, she's talking about her time in Gumpsterville. And she says, when I sit outside my trailer, I can hear the Latino music playing from the trailers. Oh, yeah. You can just. You I can just, that was funny. Yeah, yeah. You can just hear fireworks going off in the middle of the day. It's mostly them, and then a couple of like the wackier crew, like the ones that have nicknames. You know, the the Chinese yeah. Mexican and all that. Yeah, one eyed Pete. So they like they double down on his commercial thing, right? Because this summer that they're trying to film is a fucking scorcher, so they can't even work with the lions, right? Because they're just refusing to do <laughs> anything. Lazy. They're just laying down. Yeah. That probably would be like a good way to like finance your film is you just like hold up an ice cream cone next to a lion and you say like, yeah, come eat shitty biskies ice cream. And you could probably get like 10 grand biskies. for that. Yeah. yeah. They're real lions. And I I mean, that's what they did to really like supplement it because that's what they were doing. They just barely scrape by on feeding the canyon. Right. Yeah. So they they, they redo the uh, they redo that tree scene. Right. Like, the setup is the same. Like, people are real fucking worried because they're like, the last time we did this, she almost got her skull fucking crushed. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so, listen, we need to add more excitement. We need to do five lines this time instead well, of actually, two. Well, you're actually, not, you're not wrong, Joe, because he did change the scene to add a little bit more excitement, yeah. right? Yeah, the kids get bored easy. Noel was like, hey, listen, you know what would be really great? You know that time the lion jumped on your back? What if that's part of the shot? So oh. she runs across the logs, drops down on her stomach, and the lions are supposed to run past her, right? Yeah, And yeah. then he created, like, a fiberglass shell that she was supposed to wear on her back so that a lion would sit on her. But it mm. looked like shit. So yeah. they just got rid of it, and they just had to do the same fucking scene. They had one of the lions get on her back and sit there, and they were, like, maybe 15 seconds away from ever being able to reach her. Right? And so she's wow. in the exact same fucking spot that she was in before. Right? Oh, that There's no, a lion no, that, on her back just chilling yeah. there. Any second it could just completely kill her. No, no. That tiger knows it's her his mommy. <laughs> his pit mommy. Yeah. It would never. People are scared. And then after like twenty five minutes, he's like, Okay, we got the shot, you know, from all these different angles. Mark, you know, Noel runs over and shoes the lion off. Like, he just goes up and he goes, shoo, shoo, and the lion leaves. Yeah, skedaddle. And they're like, oh, my God, this is awesome. They embrace and the scene's over. And then the lion, like, gets up and pushes them both off the branch. Ah! Which is what he wanted. Like, that's the whole point of this movie was that, hey, we need these scenes of, you know, wild, untrained lion behavior. They made a really big deal in the book, by the way, of that, like, two second shot in the movie of a lion playing with a skateboard. They said that oh, was yeah. like the most beautiful thing they'd ever recorded. Oh my! It's such a it's a, it's a untamed nature. Animals like wheels. <laughs> it, Who it knew? It must be like imagine going through thirty eight film canisters and then getting something like that. That's like oh, that's kind of a fun shot. That looks like a shot that anyone with a trained line would be able to easily do, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could just take a skateboard to a zoo and slip it between the bars, and you could probably get that same footage then. Yep. <laughs> So they get the shot and it it just works for fuck's sake. Fucking finally, finally, one scene has gone right for them. Right. Yeah. 
So it's not until January that they're able to bring everyone in for another roar scene. So they just spend like another six months just fucking just doing commercials and whatever they can to get by. Right. Going out, talking to even more investors, yada, yada, yada. Buy our butter. It's lion approved. So it's January. They're doing another Africa house scene. Right. Yeah. This is the same shot from before again, where he got his hand bitten. Oh, that would never happen again. His wardrobe for the shot was a plain shirt and shorts. DeBont told him, hey, it's January. Your legs are too white. As is, it's going to it's not going to match continuity because this is uh, supposed to be yeah. summer. You look too pasty. And they wouldn't just let him wear jeans because of continuity. So makeup applied a uh. fake tan and then they did the shot. Everybody knows the characters only have one set of clothes. Nobody owns, like, different pants. So this whole scene is in the final movie. Again, you get to see this. So the two humans, Mark and Mativo, are talking on the steps, right? This is where Mativo looks like his fuck, like he's wild eyed, like he is not fuck. He's not happy about this. And if you watch the scene, you'll see one of the lions gets a whiff of the stuff on his leg, stares at him for a yeah. bit. And then just bites down and drags him off the stairs while he's screaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he just will not leave his legs alone. And then it eventually just ends in terror. Yep. So <laughs> he doesn't want to get evac at first, right? Like the lion just bit like eight fangs into his thigh. And he's like, no, 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 I need to be on set. I have to visit some Japanese investors. <laughs> I'll be good in the morning. Just leave me be. So he gets the fuck. He's out. He he goes <laughs> to the hospital for like the fourth time. I don't know what the fuck, dude. Well, they they had set up a punch card system with the production. <laughs> so every yeah, ten people they bring in, you get one treated for free. Yeah, Doctor Cadaver's best friend discount. Yeah. So the next five days, like he goes to the hospital and they go on a they go on a break, right? For the next five days, like Joe. It just gets worse from here, by the way. I should say, like, shit never stops hitting for them. The next five days, the whole county is drowning in record-breaking rainfall. Oh. Oh, yeah, and they had, like, uh, damned something up, too. Yep. So they did take their safety precautions, right? Five feet higher than the flood line is, like, the union would have been, yep, that's okay, time for my union break, right? Like, they would have been... (laughs) They would have been fine with that. That's, you know, he, he actually did what they were supposed to do. OK, so eight miles north of uh, Soledad Canyon, one of the major roads had been elevated, right? Like it'd been it's like that thing from like Red Dead Redemption where like you'll see like the train trestles and shit. It's like, that. oh, OK, yeah. So this created a dam beneath it, right? That wasn't it was, but that's not really like a big deal, right? It had drainage pipes that were diverting water away. However, further north, two large mounds of dirt had been placed by someone to keep water off the train tracks. It rained so much that stuff sloughed away as mud slid down into the canyon and blocked the drainage pipes. Yeah, nobody likes looking at muddy train tracks. We give we we sell people a clean train experience when they buy their tickets, and we'll be damned if they have to see wet, slick-looking tracks while they're dr- riding in a train. <laughs> yeah, well, you could spit at the lions beneath you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and they actually so, like that too. They consider that like a nice, like a beverage. Yeah. So at two a.m., Joe, if you can believe it or not, the dam breaks and sends a ten-foot wall of water crashing through the entire fucking canyon, dude. Mm, the whole well, thing is just destroyed. I hope the sheep are all right. It takes everyone completely by surprise, right? All the crew buildings are torn apart, gates are smashed open, and cats are flying everywhere. A thousand pounds of tiger meat just went rotten in the freezer. (laughs) Everyone's trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. They take stock and they're like, "Okay, everything's here except for four crew members and 28 lions. Mm, Yeah, maybe maybe they like congealed together like ants to make a raft. Tigers (laughs) do that sometimes. So they look out and they see one of the Gumsterville trailers has been jammed onto like a small trash island. They also see on that island 
four men in ten pissed off lions. Oh, yeah. Just going through the trailer, eating people's pop tarts. Yep. So they're you know the they got the fucking whitewater rapids going around it, right? And they're ah. stuck on this island with all these lions. So yeah. the firefighters show up and attempt a rescue mission, but they don't have like the tools for a lion rescue mission. So, which is ironic, actually, because they clearly had fire extinguishers. So I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what their issue was. Well, yeah, and sticks they could wave at the lion. Yeah. Yeah. So Tippy calls Noel in the hospital and is like, hey, uh, we just got hit by a huge tidal wave. Everything's busted. He was about he was like just about to start going into the prep for surgery on his leg. Right. It was thigh because it was so it was so infected that if he did not have that operation in four hours, he was 100 percent going to lose his leg. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just let me wade through the flood water to save my babies. He gets into a wheelchair and leaves the hospital, signs the paperwork saying that he's leaving early and then drives to the canyon one legged through the storm. Mm. So, Is he like a big help there, at least? Is he able to do anything? <laughs> well, he does something. You'll, you'll see what he does. Oh, OK, OK. So it's about 3 a.m., but an hour after the flood broke and yeah, the sheriff's yeah. office gets a 911 call. An help! elderly couple. Help! There's a there's a tiger <laughs> island now. Help, they've invaded. An elderly couple had gone out to watch the rain and two creatures had come out of the darkness and tried to enter their trailer. Mm. Having dealt with Soledad's 15 million evacs, the sheriff knows exactly what's going on. Oh, my right? God. Like, he's like, oh, yeah. it's these it's these fucking people again. It's the chupacabras again. <laughs> they, they, they're alien pets off the spaceship and they keep going after cattle and sucking out their blood. Help us. <laughs> So back in Soledad, the freezer is is complete. It's gone. Like, it's just gotten mm. torn up. So they mm. gather up all the raw meat that's, like, in the trees. Oh, by the way, so in the trees, there is sand, cottonwood trees, raw meat, and film canisters across, like, five miles. Oh, because they're going to have to get the those editing back. Room. Oh, yep. uh, uh, well, I'm sure that's not going to make editing a pain for them. So it'll be real they, easy to just reassemble all the raw footage and find it again. And I'm sure you'll be paid to do that too. Yeah, yeah. Just spooling it back up one roll at a time. They create like three different big ass piles of meat to try and like lure the cats out, right? Mm, okay. Meat piles. Yeah. And it actually works. Like the lions are eating it. They come over. They put a leash around their neck, guide them back to the remaining compounds. Right. Oh, and this okay. is where I was saying before. At this point, the crew is so small. The human hallway needs each person to carry this stupid fucking wooden stick, dude. Yeah. 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 Just gripping onto a two by four and just hoping that if the tigers attack, you can maybe bat them away with it. <laughs> Praying to God. Uh, they're almost done when a helicopter flies down and scares off the oh, cat. pisses them off, yeah. <laughs> it's the sheriff and a whole-ass SWAT team, because he is done with Soledad's bullshit. Mm, yeah, they're going in like Waco. Just execute every last breathing <laughs> thing you see in this compound. <laughs> they're about to cheat this shit like Raccoon City. Yeah. So Noel arrives about the same time. And the sheriff tells him that two of his cats are put down already and they needed to get the rest of them rounded up before there's any more casualties. He's like, I've put two in your stupid cats. I'll put one in you next. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and same exact gun, too. <laughs> Elephant gun on both of you. <laughs> so Noel is like, all right. Like, he's not happy about it. He thinks that it was unreasonable that they had to kill his lions. You know, the lions that were going to murder two old people in their trailer. No, and oh, yeah. Fucking peeling the trailer open like a tin can of sardines. No, they're playing. Just let them roam around. They're exploring their new nature. Yep. All right, now get this, Joe. This is this is insane. So no. he's helping leash up the lions with big metal chains while SWAT evacuates the dudes on the island, right? He's okay, helping yeah. move one of the lions into a trailer when the chain wraps around his bad leg and the cat jumps and he blacks out like he's just he's mm. just instantly he's done. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. assume it drags him for a few feet before being like 
grabbed by someone. I don't it, know. It popped out whatever pus was remaining in the leg like a big blister. That is actually what happened, yes. Because he oh, wakes oh, up yeah. later and the chain had constricted and fucking just... It shot all the infection out of his leg and he didn't need the surgery anymore. Oh, how nice for him, yeah. So meanwhile, while he's blacking out and have, like in a pus and blood filled puddle... Yeah, the yeah. SWAT team circles around Robbie, the main hero lion, and is trying to lead him into a cage, right? He gets spooked and he does his like fake charge, but they don't know this is some some bald bullshit and they just fucking put two in him and call it a day. Yeah, right? yeah. That's what you get, lion. We're not summoning salt. We're not doing this shit blindfolded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the canyon is in ruins, right? Three lions have died. The lake around the African house has been filled with sand. Oh, I All thought you the- were going to just... It's filled up with lion blood. <laughs> lion blood. A bog of lion blood. Yeah. Just a huge river going through town. And like I said, there's... I mean, there's film that's scattered. It's like buried in sand five miles away. It's, it's fucking destroyed. Yeah, but yeah. luckily... The film negatives were in Hollywood at the time of the flood, so the project hasn't been collapsed. So, I was confused about this. Does that mean that the film negatives, like, what they had that was like, this is our 75%, this is our finished product, was in Hollywood for safekeeping? What does it mean by the negatives like that? The negatives are, like, all the raw footage you took at that film, and then you edit the negatives, like, into your film, and then you build prints off those negatives. So, like, you scan them in, and then you build additional, like, 35mm prints that based on the negatives. But you want to you wanna keep the negatives, like, as safe as you can, because um, that's how you're going to do, like, re-releases, like, later on, if you ever want to again. Okay. So he got very lucky by them just being in there, because, I mean, obviously this film that's been... I. I would assume that the film has been destroyed, right? Like, it went through a fucking, like, flood. It's done, right? You can't do anything with all this film. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, I, so there was some raw footage that, like, fell into the salt water whenever they were filming Jaws, and that was actually able to be saved, because uh, it was, like, close enough to a saline solution to not, like, dissolve the negatives. Yeah, but that was also... <laughs> that was Jaws. This is Roar. But, I mean, what they probably lost, they probably lost, like, a lot of, like, undeveloped, like, non-used, like, uh, film canisters, and they probably lost, like, a lot of daily, like, footage. They probably lost, like, a good week or two's worth of footage. Yeah. Just depending on whether they had filmed and still had on hand. The, so the whole, like, if the film movies are gone, the movie's over, right? So oh, yeah, said no, no, what yeah, happens, yeah. like, the L.A. Times is like, yo, that's crazy. We want to run an article on what happened here, and reaches out to them. And at this point, he kind of gets like a second wind, right? And he starts going out of his way to get in as many, like, in front of as many cameras as he can to talk about his thing. Look at me. I have no leg. (laughs) Look at my leg. Look at my leg. (laughs) The lions took it away from me. He does a really smart play here. And what he does is he starts hamming it up as like a crazy lion guy. Like he grows his hair out to look like a giant lion's mane and everything. Oh, yeah. Right? He gets, like, a facial tattoo of a lion on him. (laughs) He's got three tears on his cheek, one for each lion. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he's doing all this. Like, he's, like, going out talking to people. And uh, a bunch of, like, local kind of businesses start lending him some help, right? Uh, They help out, you know, the hows, the cats, and the crew and kind of pay wages. They're giving a bunch of trailers and stuff to, like, kind of hold the cats, like, just. Just 15 cats in a semi-truck trailer. Just ripping through the walls. They actually, uh, there's a bit in the book, um, they got, like, moving vans, like U-Hauls, and what they saw was that the lions were able to get out through the tiny windows, so they started welding things to it. (laughs) Just welding whatever metal scrap they could find to stop the lions from getting out. Oh, they could have, like, really pranked people with that. Like, like, hey, listen, we'll move your furniture for you for free. And then whenever the guy opens the door at his new house, there's just a hungry <laughs> tiger looking at him. Then the tiger goes in and starts pissing on everything and tries to kill his cat and dog. Yeah, taking big meat shits. Yeah. Uh, this one I thought was kind of fun. Like, a local loves truck stop or whatever the equivalent was just let them erect two little mini compounds of lions in their parking lot. 
Yeah, we're not using it for nothing. The teens get come over here and they do drifts in it. We want to stop these teens from drifting in our parking lot. Ah, yeah, just put about 50 lions here. <laughs> um, they get like a bunch of meat and all that. Like, they, they get a bunch of bunch of shit donated. Oh. Uh, President Carter declares L.A. County a disaster area, which qualifies uh, his advertising company. Because remember, that one's legit. Soledad Canyon is definitely not. Uh, he gets like a huge federal loan program to rebuild, right? Because he was using Soledad as a filming thing. Oh, so yeah. So using the loan money, he uses that to keep six animal handlers and staff on payroll, right? Oh, like, okay. He does that to keep everyone on payroll for like months of manual labor. Right. To try and fix the film set because they have to finish the movie in his mind. He's like, I'm going to do it. Right. I don't, I'm already in for three mil. My house. All four of my houses are gone. My kids don't talk to me. Maybe things are finally going to go their way. Right. What do you yeah. think? Joe? you think things are finally going to go up? You think he's finally going to finish his movie? Oh, oh, yeah. No, it's nothing. Nothing but high hopes and clear skies from here on out. So two weeks later, it fucking floods again. Ah, well. <laughs> it floods again. And then, Joe, it catches on fire. Oh, so, okay, yep. <laughs> so yeah. it floods, right? And the first, like, the second flood wasn't that bad. It did, they did undo months of work. Like, they had to just immediately go back and redo everything. Yeah, we're just, we're gonna swap the title. It's gonna be Wet and Wild Lions now. What happened was, all this happened in, like, the late spring, right? So flooding means more plants, which means when it got to summertime, there was more kindling and the whole fucking canyon caught on fire, dude. Mm. I had assumed that well, maybe gasoline had mixed in with the water and everything just caught on fire. But I think he learned his I think he learned his mistake from his pay disputes. That's why he only has six people on staff. Yeah, yeah. They did luck out this time, though. The, the fire, like, it started circling, like, around the canyon. It got, like, within, like, a five-mile circle around it. But then it just burned itself out. So, oh, like, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe things actually will go their way, as cursed of a statement that is, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe the tigers could help, like, put it out with their paws, just stomping it out. Yeah. They're so they friendly. get their negatives. The negatives come back. And uh, they ADR all the lines that they can, because if you notice that in the movie, there's a shitload of ADR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's only about um, 10 minutes of footage. Yeah, back in the day, it it would have been all through, like, boom mics, where you gotta get it, like, above them and pretty close to them, too. So if you're off, your audio is just gonna be shit and unusable. I've noticed this about newer movies, is that the audio mixing is just, like, dog shit. Do they do it so that you can hear it on your cell phone? Yes, yeah, and the, they want the the levels to be nice and, like, normalized. So People don't like it whenever there's quiet scenes and then, like, explosion scenes. And the volume difference is too much. I think that's fair. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. But then, like, whenever you're actually, like, trying to watch something on, like, your TV through, like, cable or whatever, your movie will be, like, pretty quiet. But then the ads will pop on and they're all loud as shit. Yeah, yeah, we've got a brand new type of pill. It makes your penis one inch longer, but it gives you seizures and you lose blood <laughs> out your ass. And you can, if you if you talk to your doctor, you too can get these nice pills. <laughs> so ten minutes left to film, right? The final scene is the hero lion Robbie and the villain Togar teaming up to maul the bad guy poachers. There's a few problems. Oh, okay. So the problems are Robbie is fucking dead and Togar is like 18 years old, right? Ah, yeah. Lazy now. Just lazing about. So they replace Robbie with a new lion named Zuru. Just just another lion looks close enough. Like at this point, because remember, they filmed this sequentially for the most part, too. So they're like, fuck it. Who gives a shit? Zuru. Yeah, fine. I don't care. Whatever. But yeah, the I heard other it's, one, uh, it was like an 11 year process to get this done. Yeah, it didn't come out till I want to say the eight, like 81. Yeah, yep. It started, and, yeah, 78 or something like that. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it ever came out in America because I think like uh, whatever producers they were talking to just wanted way too much of the money. Yep, I got to think about that. Oh, so, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Togar is too old now, so they take his son, the only lion that looks like him, 
Tongaru, the one that kept trying to fucking kill people, and they spray paint his mane black, say fuck it, and they teach him the visual cue to do the fake attack. Oh, right? okay. No way the lion's gonna fake us out. <laughs> so one of the assistant directors named Doran had come over to talk to one of the lion handlers, right? This is one of like the six or eight crew. He absentmindedly bends over to scratch Tongaru's chin in the middle of the conversation. Turns out the signal to attack? What do you think it is, Joe? Uh, the signal you, to you, fake yeah, yeah, attack. You, you bend over and show the tiger your ass, and that gets him enraged. He gets really <laughs> pissed off. He, yeah, he stands up on his two legs and he starts growling. You're correct. It is to slightly bend at the waist. Mm -hmm. So Tongaru leaps up, smashes into the dude's jaw, breaks three of his teeth, knocks him over, and goes right for the fucking throat, dude. Oh, they better have a fire extinguisher ready to go. Five crewmen manage to pull the lion off. The dude starts crawling to safety, right? Okay, Then yeah. they lose their grip, and Tongaru goes back and bites him right on the ass cheek. Mm-hmm, yeah. He, you don't ever show that to me again. You don't <laughs> ever get to moon me. I'm a tiger. I'm the one who moons. Uh, two months later, that guy returned to the set and wanted to reconcile with Tongaru. But I think at this point, Noel was sick of these fucking lions, and he just told him, he's like, no, man, just go away. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, he had like a uh, he had like a pistol like on his leg, and then yeah, he was planning to reconcile. Yeah, I just yeah. want to shake his hand. Let me close to the lion, please. <laughs> so they do get the scene eventually. They get it done, and the film is finished. And I imagine they throw the biggest, fanciest crew pizza party ever. Like oh yeah, lunch with Papa John's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now. They need to find a publisher, right? Warner Bros. was obviously not interested. It was not no. happy because they did. They were forced to pay a settlement because he I don't know how he got the money. I don't know if he got it from the film consortium or if he used his uh, if he used his U.S. government loan to just sue uh, Warner Brothers. He might have done that. Oh, yeah, maybe. But they're like, no, we're not doing this. So he approaches uh, Disney and a bunch of others. And they're not they're like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll release this, but we're keeping 90% of the revenue, which again, just like before, I imagine that he told them what happened and they were just like, oh, this is like a Del Toro situation. We could just fuck this guy over and he can't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not really interested. We already got three other big cats in homes in production. So, ah, we'll give you half a mil for the rights. <laughs> so the film ended up releasing everywhere except North America through Filmways Pictures, who also did Beverly Hillbillies. So that's like the only other thing that they did. I don't know how oh. he got the Hillbillies. This dude really like if you think about how many people he convinced to give him money, like he really must have been good at fast talking because look at his fucking movie. It's just yeah. a bunch of lions meandering around on a set, dude. Uh huh. Well, and then they they they, they struck Earl, and but they thought it was Pooh at first, but then they realized it was Earl, and then they were able to go live in a mansion. <laughs> so Roar, uh, Roar didn't do great. I think it grossed like two million, which was a seventh of its budget, right? Like it cost yeah. fourteen mil. Somehow the TV rights went to Disney, and I saw it on TV in the 2000s. It was either Disney or IFC, you know, the uh, two and a half men channel. Well, yeah, yeah. The sitcom marathon channel now. Yeah. Yeah. Some beyond that, beyond like seeing it on the TV, somehow uh, the last publicity the movie really had was in 2014. Alamo Drafthouse bought the rights and then yeah, did yeah. like a like a limited time run. Uh, Tippy and Noel, they got divorced. Uh, she's still around. She's in her 90s and she's still managing Soledad Canyon as like an actual legit animal sanctuary now. What do you mean? They're not just like roughhousing with like the lions anymore and just filming them and having them climb up on the roof. There was a really good scene in the movie where they were uh, in like a, a water jug 
And uh, he just kept diving as the lions were above him trying to drink the water. But they couldn't just put a camera in the water. So there was an actual cameraman in that in that jug facing up at all the lions. Ah, well, Oh, in that scene, you mentioned this scene. Tippy says the most dangerous scene that she worked on. There was a scene where a shelf knocked over and then honey rolled over and would oh, fall yeah, on her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. And the first time they did that scene, the jar just fell and just smashed her on the top of her head. It gave her, like, a light concussion. Ah, well, at least it wasn't a puma this time. And, this, well, the puma was still there. Like, the puma was still right in front of her face. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. just didn't have any honey to lick off the first <clears> time. <throat> Yeah. What she was saying in the book, she was like, I realized as because you could see the fear in her eyes in the scene, too. She's like, I realized at that moment, if that tiger or if that puma wanted to do something to me, there'd literally be no one that could stop it. This thing could just completely fuck my shit up and I can't do anything about it. Yeah, well, and like they all have like sandpaper tongues, too. What they would do to bond with the lions when they're at the home is they would stick their thumb in the lion's (laughs) mouth and it would just lick it. Like, you know, when like a cat come over and just kind of lick your hand, yeah, give kisses, they would do that. And what would happen is that you couldn't take your thumb out until it had been rubbed until it bled. Right. Because that's when mm. they would finally stop. Yeah. Nice bloody thumb. Beautiful creatures. So, yeah, movie came out, didn't do very well. They divorced. They went went on their own ways. Um, Damn. Melanie Damn. went on to do some other movies. There was a couple mildly successful movies she was a part of. I think my big takeaway from Roar, though, is how over time you can, like, lose sight of what you're doing, right? Because they started with, oh, man, this bunch of lions, that's crazy. And then it turns into, let's show off how cool our lions are, which turns into our marriage fell apart. All four of our kids have been maimed and our final movie isn't even that good. Yeah, no, I'm amazed that, like, their marriage fell apart. Because, yeah, most marriage counselors, like, say, like, if you want to spark up the relationship, just add 130 big cats to your life. <laughs> and an elephant. Timbo actually had a girlfriend, too. He had an Asian elephant. Oh, hell yeah. But he yeah. ended up just, like, he just killed her. So, oh, I don't damn. know what happened. Yeah. He just, like, tore her ear off. And the handler was like, Timbo, what the fuck? And then no! he gave him a bunch of beer so that he oh, went to yeah. sleep. And then they took her to a different sanctuary where she uh, recovered without Timbo nearby. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably what happened. Yeah, he got all lit up on beer and then, yeah, decided. <laughs> Eddie. To... Uh-huh, yeah. Ugh, how dare you do that? I was looking at a stone you got in my way. <laughs> so final thoughts on it. The vibes of Roar are incredibly unique. And I recommend watching the movie because you will never see anything like this ever again. Unless it's on no. the dark web. Uh, yeah, because uh, I was like, most films don't even like shooting with real animals at this point. Um, it, it's mostly CGI critters. So, yeah, you'll yeah. you'll definitely never see something like uh, we're like they're actually going after people on camera again. That'll never happen. Yeah, this movie just. It's such an odd feeling. I've never the only movie that's ever had a feeling like this was when I uh, watched Eraserhead, where there's just like something off about the whole freaking thing, man. Something's not right. Yeah, yeah. It just it yeah. Eraserhead. It's just like living in Philadelphia, which is a horrifying experience. You never want to actually live there or like look <laughs> at it in any way. It's like the uh, American version of Soledad Canyon. Yeah. All right, Joe, do you have any other of uh, any final thoughts that you wanted to share about Roar before we end the episode? This super sode, this two and a half hour super sode. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, so it is very close to just kind of watching Raw Dailies as like a film. Uh, the only thing I can like kind of say it's like similar to there was there was plans to do a sleepaway camp four at one point. Uh, they had shot three of them, two went direct to DVD. They were going to shoot number four. But mm-hmm. they shot in the woods for, like, about a week, and then all the money ran out, and they gave up on it. <laughs> but what, yeah, they had about 20 minutes of new footage of a lady just running around in the woods. And then they intercut that with just old clips from Sleepaway Camp 1, 2, and 3. That really is like this movie, because all the events in the movie that happen are just kind of random. Like, there's nothing really chaining them together. Things just happen. Like, yeah, just any footage you could capture and it's still usable just goes in the film. <laughs> yeah, the majority of this movie is 
the main character, Mark, screaming, no, Togar, stop, and then bidding fun. My favorite shot in the movie is he's running, having fun with the cats, and then you see him get fucking spear tackled onto the ground and then, like, do everything in his power to stand up before he's killed on camera. <laughs> ah, help me! It's a wild ah, movie. Ah, this isn't a movie. Help! Help! Someone pick me up! Help! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roar is crazy. I've, I, the only movie that I know of off the top of my head where more people got fucked up was The Twilight Zone. And that's because they yeah. died. No one died in Roar. They were all rich people that got sliced apart and then put together with plastic. I think there's a there's like a 1920s Noah's Ark movie where they did. They just flooded the whole set and like 20 people died on it. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a Noah's Ark movie um, from, yeah, like the 1920s. But yeah, that's probably like the highest casualty count of like any movie out there. God, imagine dying in there and they cut your scene out from the movie. Uh, oh, OK, here. It's 1928. Um... 1928. Uh, lions, 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 lions and more lions. Yeah, okay, so yeah, uh, 7,500 extras are working on the film. Uh, 600,000 gallons of water got pumped into the set. Three extras drowned. One was so badly injured that his leg needed to be amputated. And there were a number of broken limbs and other injuries. 35 ambulances attended the wounded. Holy shit. So it was just like a fake city of Bethlehem, and then they flooded it with water? Yeah. Yeah. Did the extras know it was happening? I don't I don't think like everybody knew exactly what was going to happen. I guess because yeah, if you have that many extras, how are they going to keep track of it all? That's yeah. nuts. Yeah. And like yeah, I think um like I you probably can't actually see like people drowning for real. I don't think they would have been able to cut all that. That's insane. Yeah. So if you ever want to see uh, a movie where a man gets dragged off the stairs screaming and there's light, happy, like, up. oh, yeah, the intro of the movie is like stretched because all of the lions have their own like credits where it says Robbie the lion as Robbie because they needed to get it up to 90 minutes. Yeah, we need another seven minutes of credits. We'll never be able to release in theaters like this. It's 74 minutes. It's crazy. Anyway. All right. That's that's all that's all I got to say on Roar. I've been working on this stupid fucking thing since July of 2023, like six months almost, because I just kept restarting. Yeah. Oof. I've had enough. of. I am not doing another research heavy episode after this. After this one, I want to look at some some railroad shenanigans or something like that. I want to see if there's some silly man who puts mud next to a railroad tie. Oh, yeah, we could probably watch, like, uh, Thomas the Tank Engine YouTubers. And, Fuck yeah. They'll yeah. Just, yeah, they'll be running amongst the tracks and just going chugga 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 to themselves. Well, Joe, you're not part of that community. You have to call it chigga. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now, you know what, Joe? As penance, why don't you do the uh, the outro plugs? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, l- let me tell you about. We got lots of episodes. Uh, you can subscribe to the RSS. You can uh, you can like it. You can hit the 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 love icon. You can you can start babbling in the comments. Just start whatever you want. Whole essays into the comments. I don't think I don't think iTunes really cares anymore. But you can babble on iTunes for the podcast. Oh. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah. Or do yeah. Uh, do like leave a review on the most obscure website you know of, so I can become the number one like Ukrainian basket weaving podcast or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just submit like a bunch of false tags to the podcast and have us trending like in the like news section. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Yeah. All right. Yeah. YouTube, iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify. There's a Discord in the description, a Patreon in the description. Discord be popping off. There's been some crazy shit going on in there. And if you weren't there, sorry to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you missed, missed it. it. Uh huh. Yeah. So I'll, I'll hope to see you guys there. Don't miss the next crazy thing that goes down. And I will see you guys in the next episode. I have to be at work in four hours. (laughs) Oh, damn. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, if you want to check more of me out, I'm over on Malevolent Movies. Uh, It's kind of like a mystery science theater uh, where we riff on the bad indie horror movies. And we got some recent ones. We got some studio ones. We got all kinds of stuff on there. Yep. They made uh, they made me and Joe's great uncle soup. Bednar into a recurring character on their podcast. Oh, yep, they did. 
They yeah. think he's some kind of ghost. We love Uncle Soup. Uncle yeah. Soup, Uncle Pudge, and Uncle Beaner. He just liked beans. He just, um, just really liked beans. Yeah. He had you know the beans like? in his pocket as a boy, yep. Yep, I like ending this podcast, Joe. Good night, oh, everyone. Oh, damn, I don't. I, I'm just, I'm just going to babble for a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Let me see what I got in my fridge. I got some Heinz cats up. Yeah, good thing about Heinz is you can just tip your head back and let it flow down your throat. You don't have to chew the Heinz. That's why I like it. Uh,